All right, so today's class is Israel 1948, where will Armageddon take place? That's always been a question about where will Armageddon take place? Will it be in America? Will it be in uh, Europe? Where will it be? So we're going to go over that today. Um, I don't know how many of you have heard it. How many of you recently have heard, heard the word Nakba? Anybody heard that word Nakba? It means catastrophe or displacement displacement through catastrophe. That's what happened in 1940. And if you notice in the news, they keep saying that um, October 7th is where it began. It did not begin, the turmoil did not begin with Hamas on October 7th. That is a lie. It started back in May 14th, 1948. That's when it all, all the problems started between those two nations. Now, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to open up with who we are. I'm going to prove who the real Israelites are through secondary sources. Then I'm going to go into who, some other history. So let's open up with this. Who's reading for me today? Officer Netjemiah. Officer Netjemiah. All right, read that couple for me. <clears throat> the land, land of the heart of Livingstone, or the genius of the Bantu. A study of the Bantu tribes of Africa, 100 million souls with special reference to the agencies which contribute to their civilization. The J heart. Jump down to the year it was published. Nineteen twenty. All right, nineteen twenty. This book was published. I always tell you, brothers, to find the old books. Look for the older books. Give me the next page, please. The land of the heart of Livingstone. It is allowed that groups of Israelitish peoples have from time to time journeyed into the Upper Nile country. Raise it up. The contention has been made that the extraneous element of the Bantu was derived from tribes of Israel, which were first carried away to Babylon, as related in the scriptures, and who afterward, in whole or in part, migrated through Egypt into equatorial Africa and through the mingling with native tribes upon whom they imposed much of their own religion and customs gave rise to the peoples now known as Bantu. Bantu is where they say that we all come from. Those sent on slave ships they call, they said are Bantu Africans. Okay, but this book is letting you know that those are Israelites. Everybody see that? And they say that we mingled with the native tribes, meaning we mingled with the Philistines, the Canaanites, the Jebusites, although they no longer go by those names, we mingled with those tribes. We were part of the Homi Empire, the Songhai Empire, we were part of the Ashanti, so forth and so on. Uh, give me the next book, please. The Flaming Torch in Darkest Africa by William Taylor. Go to the next page, please. The Hebrew nation are at present scattered over the face of the habitable globe. They are numerous in some parts of Asia, particularly the Turkish dominions. Various countries in Africa contain a large number, as Egypt and Ethiopia, and it is computed that there are 400,000 in Morocco, Algiers, and Fez. So here's another book that talks about the Israelites in Africa. Give me the next page, please. The custom to this day of some of the tribes of living in booths constructed from the branches of trees at a certain season of the year, observing ceremonies identical with those of the children of Israel. The liberation of a cock in the wilderness to carry away the transgressions of the people. The practice of circumcision, so general among the Zulus, seemed to link them with the period following the Exodus. So what are they saying? They're saying that they know that the Zulus are part of the Israelites. Go ahead. The traditional history of Abyssinia, Abyssinia is Ethiopia, connects it with that of the Jews a thousand years before Christ, when it records the visit of the Queen of Sheba to King Solomon. So in this book also, they make reference to the Israelites being amongst the Zulus and the Ethiopians. So this is little known history, all right? So now there's a video clip I want to start with. I don't know how many of you saw the news where Netanyahu said that the Arabs are Amalek. Anybody saw that? 
Wow. But y'all watch sports in uh, Sukiana and Sexy Red, right? Yes. Wow. So nobody's seen Netanyahu call the Arabs Amalek. Let's watch the video. We're going to Britain we and hey, hey, America. Alicia, we only go from the beginning up to 220, okay? All right. The calling Israel's war on Gaza genocidal can get you labeled an extremist. But Israel themselves aren't exactly hiding it. This was part of Prime Minister Netanyahu's speech to the Israeli public on Sunday. You must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Holy Bible. And we do remember and we are fighting our brave troops and combatants who are now in Gaza or around Gaza and in all other regions in Israel are joining this chain of Jewish heroes, a chain that has started 3,000 years ago from Joshua ben Nun until the heroes of 1948, the Six-Day War, the 73 October War, and all Wait, other pause wars. it. I know it's going kind of quick. I know some of y'all are slow. He said, remember what Amalek did to our forefathers. He said, their, forefa uh, their forefather Joshua ben Nun. Do you know who that is, Joshua ben Nun? Who is that? Raise your hand if you know. Let me see how many. Okay, only six people know. He's making reference. Wait, any women know? Not one sister. Oh, one sister. Only one sister. Joshua Ben Nun is Joshua of the tribe of Ephraim in the book of Joshua. He was the son of Nun. He said Nun, but it's Nun, N U N. Start from the beginning, please. I need you to understand what's being said. And America calling Israel's war on Gaza genocidal can get you labeled an extremist. But Israel themselves aren't exactly hiding it. This was part of Prime Minister Netanyahu's speech to the Israeli public on Sunday. You must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Holy Bible. And we do remember and we are fighting our brave troops and combatants who are now in Gaza or around Gaza and in all other regions in Israel are joining this chain of Jewish heroes, a chain that has started 3,000 years ago from Joshua ben Nun until the heroes of 1948, the Six-Day War, the 70. October war and all other wars in this country are hero troops. They have one supreme main goal to completely defeat the murderous enemy and to guarantee our existence in this country. We've always said never again, never again is now. Now the mention of the 19... 48 war will already be worrying to Palestinians. That was when 700,000 Palestinians were driven from their land in what they know as the Nakba, or catastrophe. But the scariest part of that speech was the biblical reference Netanyahu invoked. He said, quote, you must remember what Amalek has done to you. Now, my knowledge of scripture is not fantastic, um, but many people have now pointed out that in the Hebrew Bible, that Amalekites are described as the enemy of the Israelites, and this is what the Israelites are implored to do to the Amalekites. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Right, so kill everyone, everything, everything they own, all of them, men, women, infant and babies, right? Terrifying. For those unfamiliar with biblical references, two weeks ago, the former head of Israel's National Security Council expressed his genocidal intent in a more secular idiom um, in the Israeli newspaper Ynet News. Play on, let me hear what he says. Play on. Giora Island wrote this. Israel needs to create a humanitarian crisis in Gaza compelling tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands to seek refuge in Egypt or the Gulf. In order for this to happen, Israel needs to demand four key points with greater determination than ever before. One, the entire population of Gaza will either move to Egypt or move to the Gulf. From our perspective, every building in Gaza, known to have Hamas headquarters underneath, including schools and hospitals, is considered a military target. Two, every vehicle in Gaza is considered a military vehicle transporting 
combatants. Now, that's particularly chilling seeing the scenes of the tank firing on a car as we did today. Therefore, there is no vehicular traffic and it does not matter whether it is transporting water or other critical supplies. Number three, the UN Secretary General has initiated humanitarian aid to Gaza. The Israeli condition for any aid should be a visit by the Red Cross to Israeli hostages and especially the civilians among them. Until this happens, no aid of any kind will be permitted to enter into Gaza. That is, by definition, collective punishment, a war crime. And number four, intermediators with both diplomatic and military experience will be required to explain in detail these concepts to the rest of the world. It will not be possible to remove Hamas without exerting pressure. And if the Americans do not receive a clear and detailed explanation from Israeli officials and understand that Israel has no choice, it is comparable to the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, which led to the launch of an atomic bomb in Japan. So he's talking about an attack on Palestinians to the scale of the atomic bomb. And he concludes by saying this, as a result, Gaza will become a place where no human being can exist. And I say this as a means rather than an end. I say this because there is no other option for ensuring the security of the state of Israel. We are fighting an existential war. Now, you might say that's a former okay. member. Thank you. Hey, do we have the TikTok, Elisha? Okay, great, great, great. So now, he, Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu, tried to say that the Arabs were the Amalekites. That's wrong. The Arabs are not Amalekites. Who do the Arabs descend from, brothers? Ishmael. Ishmael. Give me Genesis 16, 11. Genesis chapter 16, verse 11. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael. So Ishmael means uh, affliction heard. Go ahead. Because the Lord hath heard thy affliction, and he will be a wild man. How wild? He'll be so wild he will strap C4 on his chest and kill everybody in the room. Read it again. And he will be a wild man. So the nature of Ishmael is to be wild in terms of fighting, in terms of attacking. Go ahead. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him. Mm -hmm. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Meaning all his brethren. Remember, he had 12 sons. Ishmael had 12 sons, 12 princes. All those sons would live close to one another in that region. Okay, everybody understand that? All right, all right. So, there are many ways to identify Ishmael in the Bible. So what I'll do off, off camera, I'll let the captains know by the various biblical names they go by in the Bible, which will help you younger men in your understanding of prophecy and um, what is to come. Give me the next book. All right. That is the compact Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Let's look up Ishmaelite. Let's see what the scholars said about Ishmael. Read the highlighted section. All Arabs following Muhammad's example claim descent from Ishmael. All Arabs following Muhammad's example, meaning all Arabs following Islam, that are Muslim, claim descent from Ishmael. So the scholars know all Arabs that are Muslim are of Ishmael. Everybody understand that, right? All right, let's go to the next video. Next video, please. Yep, let's play this one. The point is right here that Hashem say, do not have mercy on the children. Kill all their children also. Why? There's no difference between them and their children. In 10 years from now, these children will attack you on the way. Hashem knows, God knows. You kill all men and all women. Even babies who breastfeed. Amazing. All axes, all goats, camels, donkeys. Don't leave anything, any memory from this filthy nation. So that's what the Torah say. Someone is on the way to kill you now or in a year from now. You can kill him even now, a year before. You don't have to wait a minute before. You know this person will kill you. Statistically, that's what it always constantly repeat. So you're allowed to go and attack him first. Is to remember to erase the nation of Amalek, the memory of them even, not only physically to erase them from the face of the earth. Anything that reminds us about them is mitzvah to dismiss and to erase it from the face of the earth. We assume that it's the Germans, 
after we see what they did in Holocaust, not only to the Jews, to the whole world. Wait, pause it. And now, you notice he said he assumes the Germans are Amalek. Some of them were on Amalek. They're scientists. They're tops, wizards amongst them. That was Amalek. But guess what? He's Amalek. This guy right here, y'all listening to? Well, yeah, this guy, not you. I'm pointing to the screen. That guy is Amalek. So-called Jewish people are Amalek. Their job is deceive the whole, to deceive everybody, to let you think Amalek is anybody else but them. Let's play on. Face of the earth. We assume that it's the Germans, after we see what they did in Holocaust, not only to the Jews, to the whole world, and it's not only the Germans, it's most of the European countries. That's where Amalek is. Well, the European countries do have a large amount of Amalek in there, too. And we're going to prove what he, so he gave some half-truths. Right, it ain't the Arabs. And he didn't admit that he was Amalek. He, they are Amalek. I'm going to show you all that, too. Let's go into some secondary sources about Esau Amalek. Give me the next book, If I Perish, I Perish by W. Ian Thomas. Let's go inside the book. Read that. In the person of Haman, descendant So Haman, you read about him in the book of Esther. Everybody familiar with Esther, right? Y'all familiar with Haman, right? Read again. In the person of Haman, descendant of Agag, king of the Amalekites, Amalekite was added again. Y'all remember what Haman's job was? It was to make a union between the Greeks... And the Persians. So Amalek, Haman, was a Caucasian man. Jump down to the next section. In this connection, it is interesting to note that Herod the Great, who in his attempt to kill the Lord Jesus, ordered the destruction of all the children in... Next page. Bethlehem, two years of age and under, was an Edomite. According to John Peter Lange's commentary on Matthew... Herod the Great was the first sovereign of the Idumean race of Edomites, which from the year 40 before Christ reigned over Jerusalem under the supremacy of Rome. Herod was an Amalekite, descendant of Esau, and of the kith and kin of Haman. So this book here lets you know that Herod the Great was an Edomite. Now he gives you various names for the nation of Edom. Idumean, that's the same name, and an Amalekite. That's one of the children of Esau, okay? So it's all the same time. Many times, many books will just say Esau or Edom as generic and not really break it down to which one is Amalek. We have to know that, all right? So from there, give me the next book, please. Who is Esau, Edom? Who wrote this book? Charles A. Weissman. So this is Amalek wrote this. Amalek wrote this. Give me the next page. Read that. There may be justification. Read, read the whole thing, from page 59. Yes, sir. Page 59. Esau proposed to kill Jacob. Genesis <laughs> 28, 27, verse 42. It was the seed of Esau that blighted the Judah nation and usurped the name of Jew. Usurped the name of Jew. Jew comes from Judah. Go ahead. There may be justification for the view that the seed of Esau became the first Jesuits. Mm who were called Jews. Oh, oh, wait, read that again. There may be justification for the view that the seed of Esau became the first Jesuits, who were called Jews. So the Jesuits were the first ones called Jews. Go ahead. But whose order persecuted the Judites of Spain. The Judites of Spain, we went over that, were black men and women. Go ahead. In an attempt to destroy them. So they wanted to erase us and take our place. So... This is letting you know that Esau took the name Jew from us. Everybody see that, right? And thank you, uh, Atlanta, for not giving us a bomb when it comes. I have to give New York much more credit. Let's go to the next page, please. Uh, give me Genesis 25. Before we get to the book, hold on. Let's get Genesis 25, please. I guess Atlanta already knows this information. That's why there's no bombs or anything. We already know that. Okay. 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 Genesis 25, 21. Genesis chapter 25, verse 21. It's good when people know everything. I really, I really 
and my Atlanta because they're the most knowledgeable of all the IUIC schools. This one knows more than all of them. Yeah, right. Genesis 25, 21, please. Genesis chapter 25, verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Mm -hmm. And the children struggled together within her. So the children struggled together. So uh, IT, I'm giving you ample time to find some images of Esau and Jacob struggling together in the womb. Verse 20, read it again from 21 as Atlanta gets themselves together. Yes, Go ahead. Sir. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. So she said, if I'm blessed of God, God has made me pregnant. Why am I having trouble in my womb? Go ahead. And the Lord said unto her, two nations. So that's are what you want to hyphen. That's what you want to highlight. Two nations. This is the origin. This is the genesis of two nations. Read it again. And the Lord said unto her. Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. The next thing when teaching you in a highlight, two manner, meaning two different types. Two manner means two different types of people shall be separated, separated, separated. That's for all you teachers out there. Go ahead. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Now he gives... A characteristic of one people, one group, one of the races would be stronger, able to endure great turmoil. Okay, stronger mentally, spiritually, physically than this other nation. That's he's talking about us. Go ahead. And the elder shall serve the younger. The eldest son, which everyone comes out first, is destined to be a slave to the younger one. He's talking about in the kingdom. Go ahead. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold. There were twins in her womb. Now, we already read that there were two manner of children, meaning two different types. So these were not identical twins. These were fraternal twins. Go ahead. And the first came out red. Ah, now you got to examine. What race of people has the blood showing through their skin? That's the so-called Caucasians. Go ahead. All over like a hairy garment. That's why down south we call them rednecks. It's not just their neck that gets red. They're red from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Go ahead. And they called his name Esau. This is the daddy, the father of all Caucasians. Go ahead. Verse 26. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. Uh, go ahead. And the boys grew. So now the next thing you want to highlight is that they didn't identify Jacob's color. They didn't give his biblical description. Why? Because he looked just like his mother and father, Isaac and Rebecca. He looked just like everybody on the planet from the time of Adam. Brown skin, black people. Go ahead. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Come up. And Isaac loved Esau because he, he did eat of his venison. But Rebecca loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. So it's known as Edom, E-D-O-M. Everybody see that, right? All right, all right. So from there, from there, what we're going to do, give me the next book, Okay. Give me the next book. Write this down. Give that to Alicia. Now send that to Yosef. Take a snap. You can take a snapshot of that. Okay. Uh, read that. The Destiny of America. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's not what I want. I'm, I'm sidetracked. People texting me. Give me Genesis 36 in there. I'm still talking about Esau. I apologize. Genesis 36. Let's start at verse 8. Genesis chapter 36, verse 8. So I'm still explaining Esau, Edom. Go ahead. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Where did he live? In Mount Seir. Brothers, where did he live? I need to know y'all paying attention. Go ahead, read. Esau is Edom. Esau is who, brothers? Edom. Edom, read. 
And these are the generations of Esau, uh -huh. the father of the Edomites. He's the father of the Edomites. Come up. And Mount Seir. Mm -hmm. These are the names of Esau's son. Eliphaz, the son of Ada, the wife of Esau. Reuel, the son of Bashtamoth, the wife of Esau. And the sons of Eliphaz were Teman. Now, Teman, you're going to find out about this guy later on. Go ahead. Omar, mm -hmm. Zepho, mm -hmm. and Gatam. Go ahead. Kenaz. And Temna was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son. And she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. Who'd she bear? Amalek. Amalek. Go ahead. These were the sons of Ada, Ada, Esau's wife. So I wanted to read that because some books won't specify which one is Amalek, which one comes from Getam or Kenaz or Zepho. They'll just say Edom or Esau. Everybody understand that? From there, from there, give me... Exodus 17, 16. Exodus chapter 17, verse 16. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Y'all see that? The Lord swore that he would do what, brothers? War. Have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Don't be scared to say it. What did he say, brothers? Okay, all right, all praises. Now, which group we're going to find out wanted the land of Israel? Judges? Uh, uh, Noah. Joah. What? We know which group wanted to have the land of Israel. Well, you're looking, look at me. What group of Edomites wanted to have the land of Israel? Shalom, Bishop. Shalom. Um, Amalek. Where will we go to prove that? Um, Judges 3.13. Very good. Very good. Judges 3.13. Let's get that. Judges chapter 3, verse 13. And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon, and Amalek. And Amalek. Go ahead. And went and smote Israel mm -hmm. and possessed the city of palm trees. And possessed this city of palm trees. That's Phoenicians. Phoenicia, I mean. Go ahead. So the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. So what I want you all to see is that Amalek, out of those nations that was just mentioned, it's always been Amalek that wanted the land. So now, let's go to the book, Destiny of America. Let's go to the book, The Destiny of America. Read that. The Destiny of America. With an appendix, who are the Japanese? All right, let's go inside the book. Read that. The Edomite family named Timan. Named what? Timan. Didn't we read about Timan, brothers? Okay. In Hebrew is Thaman, and linguistically identical with Themen. Alfman, Offman, Osman, or Ottoman. Y'all see that? Go ahead. Osman, Ottoman, or Offman is an Edomite family name. Mm -hmm. So remember, during the Middle Ages, who took over the land of Israel? The Ottoman Empire. These those were Edomites. Go ahead. The historian Gibbon, in his 47th chapter, gives the original form of the name of Othman, the son of Etergrul, as Themen. Now, Teman, or more strictly, Themen, was a grandson of Esau. Uh, let's get to the next page, please. Read that. By mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed. Ottoman is therefore the scriptural designation of the house of Edom. Read. And its dominance over Palestine. Ah, you see that? Over its dominance over Palestine. Go ahead. And is a striking testimony of the truth of Holy Writ. Next section. Having shown that Teman, Ottoman, and Esau are all Edomite or Edom, as is Mount Seir and Idumea, we can now turn to Obadiah and see what that prophet, who died in 586 B.C., foretold. And if it has come to pass. Y'all see that? All praise to the most high. So we ain't got to make nothing up. And these are their scholars. These are their people writing these things. Okay. Give me the next book, please. 
Read that for me. The Jewish Encyclopedia. Read the next section. A descriptive record of the history, religion, literature, and customs of the Jewish people from the earliest times to the present day. Next section. Prepared by more than 400 scholars and specialists. So what we're about to read is prepared by more than 400 scholars and specialists of their own so-called Jewish people, the Amalekite people. Let's go inside the book, please. We're going to just jump for time's sake. Read the top. Khazars. Khazars. Go ahead. A people of Turkish origin. Now, you might see that and say, be confused by Turkish. But remember the Turks, the Ottoman Turks, it goes back there. That whole area of the Turks. Jump down to the next highlighted section. Among the classical writers of the Middle Ages, they were known as the Khazars, Khazars, as a, as, as a, and Akateers, and in the Russian chronicle as Qualises and Ugri Baili. Let's jump over to the side. Go to the side. Read that. In the second half of the 6th century, the Khazars moved westward. They established themselves in a territory bounded by the Sea of Azov, the Don, and the Lower Volga, the Caspian Sea, and the, Norman, the Northern Caucasus. All right, stop right there. Go to the next page for time's, for time's sake. Uh, zoom in. I want this section. Go down. Let's start there. Some centuries ago, King Buyan Bulan, Bulan. Bulan reigned over the Khazars. To, to, to him? To him, God a, a, appeared in a dream and promised him might and glory. Encouraged by this dream, Bulan went by the, by the road of Darien to the, to the country of Ar Ardbil where he gained great victories for the Aurelis, the Byzantine emperor, and the... He, gra he got great victory over the Arabs. The Byzantine emperor and the Gulf of the Ishmaelites sent to him envoys with presents and sages to convert him to their respective religion. Bulan invited also wise men of Israel and proceeded to examine them all as each of the champions believed his religion to be the best. Bulan separately questioned the Mohammedans and the Christians as to which of the other two religions they considered the better. When both gave preference to that of the Jews, that king perceived that it must be the true religion, he therefore adopted it. Now, give me the next section, go down. Uh, this account of the conversion was considered to be of a legendary nature. Harkavi, however, in Biblazvav, and I can't read those, uh, from Arabic and Slavonian sources, that the religious disputation of the Khazarian court is a historical fact. Y'all see that word? Let's go over to the, uh, give me the next page. Next page, I want the next page. Yep, zoom in right there. I want everybody to see that. Netshumai, you can read that for us. Yes, sir. In this letter, Hasdai speaks of the tradition according to which the Khazars once dwelt near the Seir, Syria mountains. So who dwelt in Mount Seir, brothers? So they know that the Khazars are Edomites. Everybody see that? All right. Now, give me the next book. Many of you may have this book. Who got this book? Raise your hand. Okay. Ten brothers. All right, let's go inside the book. I see uh, Atlanta takes their studying very seriously. Let's go inside the book. Read that for us. Our investigations cannot go into problems pertaining to the history of ideas. Wait a minute. How many officers got the book? They're not, they're, they're not off in Atlanta. Okay, two Atlanta officers got the book. Hey, the book is $10 on Amazon. After class, Not no more it, after uh, today. At, <laughs> damn! <laughs> Put it on the screen. Let's read this, Nechemiah. Woo! Our Atlanta. Inve our, invest our investigations cannot go into problems pertaining to the history of ideas, but we must call the reader's attention to the matter of the Khazar Kingdom's state religion. It was the Jewish faith which became the official religion of the ruling strata of society. Needless to say, the acceptance of the Jewish faith at, as the state religion of an ethnically non-Jewish people could be the subject of interesting speculations. 
We shall, however, confine ourselves to the remark that this official conversation in defiance of Christian proselytizing by the Byzantium, the Muslim influence from the East, and in spite of the political pressure of these two powers to a religion which had no support from any political power, but was persecuted by nearly all, has come as a surprise to all historians concerned with the Khazars and cannot be considered as accidental but must be regarded as a sign of the independent policy pursued by that kingdom. All righty, let's go to the ne next. Low, read that. Which leaves us only slightly more bewildered than before. Yet, whereas the sources differ in minor detail, the major facts are beyond dispute. What is in dispute is the fate of the Jewish Khazars after the destruction of their empire in the 12th or 13th century. On this problem, the sources are scant, but various late med medieval Khazar settlements are mentioned in the Crimea, in the Ukraine, in Hungary, Poland, and Lithuania. Now I want you all to pay close attention to those names. C write them down. Crimea, Ukraine, Hungary, Poland, and Lithuania. You're going to find out in World War II, that's where these people came from, these locations. Let's get the next page. Of a migration of Khazar tribes and communities into those regions of Eastern Europe, mainly Russia and Poland, where at the dawn of the modern age, the greatest concentrations of Jews were found. Mm -hmm. This has led several historians to conjecture that a substantial part and perhaps the majority of Eastern Jews and hence of world Jewry might be of Khazar and not of Semitic origin. Y'all see that? Let's go down to the next page, please. No, go, yeah, go ahead. Read that. The descendants of this settlement, those who stayed where they were, <laughs> those who immigrated to the United States and to other countries, and those who went to Israel, constitute now the large majority of world Jewry. Y'all see that? Read the whole, that whole section right there. Yes, sir. A new approach. A new approach, both to the problem of the relations between the Khazar Jewry and other Jewish communities, and to the question of how far we can go in regarding this Khazar Jewry as a nucleus of the large Jewish settlement in Eastern Europe. The descendants of this settlement, those who stayed where they were, those who immigrated to the United States and to other countries, and those who went to Israel constitute now the large majority of world Jewry. So now this scholar's letting you know these people are Khazars. They're not of true Israel. They're not real Jews. Next page. Go ahead. This was written before the full extent of the Holocaust was known. But that does not alter the fact that the large majority of surviving Jews in the world is of Eastern European and thus perhaps mainly of Khazar origin. If so, this would mean that their ancestors came not from the Jordan, but from the Volga. Uh-oh. Not from Canaan, but from the Caucasus. Uh-oh. Once believed to be the cradle of the Aryan race, and that genetically they are more closely related to the Hun, Uyghur, Magyar tribes than to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Should this turn out to be the case, then the term anti-Semitism would become void of meaning. Based on a misapprehension shared by both the killers and their victims, the story of the Khazar Empire, as it slowly emerges from the past, begins to look like the most cruel hoax which history has ever perpetrated. That's right. Mm. Them bottom half. One eleventh century Hebrew author, Japheth Ibn Ali, himself a Karaite, explains the word Mamzer, bastard, by the example of the Khazars who became Jews without belonging to the race. Y'all see that? So they're calling these white people Mamzers. They are bastards. This ain't, this ain't me saying from any racist standpoint. This is their people talking about themselves. That they are bastards. I didn't write this. They said they became Jews without belonging to the race. 
You see that? Next page. Accustomed to the splendid baths of Baghdad, our traveler could not get over the dirtiness of the Turks. Mm. The goose. Wait, wait. Remember who were the Turks? Right. Okay. Edomites. Very good. The goos do not the wash. Guz, guz, guz. The guz do not wash themselves after defecating or urinating. White man ain't gotta wash his hands or nothing. Bro, come on. Wait, Remember wait, that wait, joke? Wait. Remember that on Bulldogs? They said white man ain't gotta wash his oh. hands or nothing. Bishop, hold on a minute. Didn't y'all see that in Israel? Yes. But he took a dump and just got up, put his yep. pants up, in the middle shit of the drawers and all that. Yep. Go back. Nor do they bathe after seminal pollution or on other occasions. Bruh. They refuse to have anything to do with water, particularly in winter. Let me ask y'all a quick. Do y'all see the one they wear these black jackets and his dandruff everywhere? Oh, okay. Go ahead. When the Guz commander in chief took off his luxurious coat off brick brocade to don a new coat the mission had brought him, they saw that his underclothes were fraying apart from dirt. Damn. For it is their custom never to take off the garment they wear close to their bodies until it disintegrates. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. Another Turkish tribe, the Bashkirs, shave their beards and eat their lice. They search the folds of their undergarments and crack the lice with their teeth. Damn. Hey. When Ibn Fadlin watched a Bashkir do this, the latter remarked to him, they are delicious. Damn! No, I didn't write this. I'm not being racist. This is what their scholars wrote. Give me the map. So as you can see, the Khazar Empire was vast. And there's the Guz at the bottom right. As y'all can see that right there? Okay, the Guz, that's who we just read about. So let's go back to the book. Give me the next section. Read that. The end of the Khazar Empire also signified the beginning of a new and unfortunate era for Jews. No longer did the Jews of Eastern Europe have a nation of their own. An independent Jewish state would not rise again until the establishment of Israel in 1948. So this scholar, when y'all read about Arthur Kussler, allegedly he committed suicide, him and his wife. But no, he was killed. You gotta do the finger. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> They murdered him. Mossad got rid of this guy, him and his wife. Okay, next page, please. Next book. Oh, okay. Here. Right there, right there. Uh, no, no, it was the, the no, no, no. It was the, the news, right there. Put that on the screen. Chicago Daily Sun-Times. Its name is Israel. U.S. recognizes Jewish state. So, now let's get, give me the next video. It's an Instagram video. Right there. Pay close attention. How many of you know that the Israeli flag, they call it the Star of David. King David had nothing to do with it. That is an occult hexagram. And the Israelis know it. Jews all over the world know yes. it's a hexagram. They know it has Kabbalistic origins. It's esoteric. It's magical. Yes, mystical. And if you ever see any Freemason lodges in your city, just look up at the peak of the roof. And more than likely, you'll see that satanic see. star there. Right. And because Freemasons believe in it, too. This is all my first trip to Jordan, when I started to walk down the path to the river, one of the Jordanian soldiers told me, do not make eye contact with the IDF soldiers across the river. Yes, I, I remember. That. Do you remember that? I remember that conversation. I mean, what do you mean? You don't even make eye contact with them. Don't look at them. They'll shoot. So if they'll shoot you for looking at them on the other side of the river, they want us to believe that a bunch of ragtag terrorists in paragliders and motor scooters and motor scooters and four wheelers launched a massive attack on Israel, which is now today they're saying is comparable to the Holocaust. The Holocaust is now being tied into this and God's unchosen people are at work today. Oh, you said unchosen. Wait, go back. Read it, play it again. I want to hear it again. I want to hear the first part again. 
How many of you know that the Israeli flag, they call it the Star of David. King David had nothing to do with it. That is an occult hexagram. And the Israelis know it. Jews all over the world know it's a hexagram. They know it has Kabbalistic origins. In case it's anybody don't know what, we're talk what he's talking about, can you put a picture of the hexagram, please? I know someone's in the audience talking about, yeah, that's it right there on, this, on the flag. That's the hexagram, the star. You got foolish black Hebrew Israelites who are wearing that. Now they're getting bust upside the head with flagpoles and their car ran into them because they're wearing this stupid evil sign. Okay? This has nothing to do with God. This has nothing to do with the Bible. Okay? Give me that in Amos 526, please. And when you hear them say, oh, God gave that symbol to David, challenge them. That's a lie. Where is that in the Bible? I want a scripture. I want book, chapter, and verse, nigga. Because you's a liar. You's a liar. That was a big thing. I remember that was a big conversation at the old school. Okay. Read that for me. Amos chapter 5, verse 26. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Kayan, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. Therefore, will I cause you to That's go... That's all I want to read it again. I'm sorry. Verse 26. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Keon, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. Now, when you look those idols up, the star, they showed them as five-point pentagrams or six-point hexagrams. You have five-point pentagrams on it, and then you have some that show six-point Hexagrams. That's what the black Hebrew Israelites are wearing. Give me Acts 7.43. Acts chapter 7, verse 43. Yea, you look up the took, ye took. You took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your god Rimphan mm -hmm. figures ye which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. So that star, what it's talking about, goes into that pentagram or hexagram. It's the same demonic entity. Don't put that. I don't even want to show their face. Take the, yeah, put them back up. I don't want to show no, because I don't want to give them no honor at all. That's right. Okay. Because they would love for us to show their images. That way they can go, we're famous now. No, you're going to stay in the dungeon where you belong. You black, dusty Hebrew Israelites. Stay in a dungeon. Now, <laughs> give me the next picture. That ain't the one. Right, that's it right there. Read that. What does a Ukrainian coat of arms mean? Let's go to, many of you may not know what the Ukrainian arms even looks like. Give me the next one. That's it in the very center in gold. Next picture. That's it right there. That's the symbol of Ukraine. Give me the next one. Shaped as a trident. Okay, that's all I want. There's too much reading in this. Give me the next one. Uh, you can read this. The oldest image of the Ukrainian trident dates back to the 10th century when the ancient state Ky Kyvan Rus was on the territory of modern Ukraine. It is assumed that the symbol was seen as a magical talisman. The symbol's most important use was when it was used as a seal and a dyn dynastic coat of arms by members of the Rurik dynasty. It was depicted everywhere on coins. Wait, wait, let me see who's thinking. Who was in Ukraine, brothers? Yes, the Khazars, Esau, Edom, yes. That's, I want y'all to know who we're talking about. It's the same group of people. These people converted to become Jewish. Remember that. Go ahead, read on. It was depicted everywhere on coins, dishes, tombstones, bricks, rings, weapons, equipment, and so on. Most artifacts which document the seal's ancient use date back to the time of Vladimir the Great. So the symbol's polariz uh, polarization is frequently attributed to him. It is all right, that's, I don't want to read all of that. Give me the next one. Read that. Along with the decline of the Kivan Rus, the sign of the trident also disappeared. 
It was restored in the 20th century when the question of choosing a coat of arms for the Ukrainian People's Republic arose. All right, give me the next picture. Go ahead. During the Soviet rule, the regime branded the trident as a national, nationalist sign, and its use was prohibited. In the 20th century, the trident became a symbol of the Ukrainian struggle for independence. All right, give me the next video. It's a video I want. Zoom, can you make that bigger or no? Okay, play it. Volume. In time and try to actually understand what happened in Khazaria. Why did these Jews convert or why did these people convert to Judaism? What kind of Judaism did they practice and so on? So here's a map that shows you exactly where the Khazarian Empire uh, was in the, at the time of conversion, about 740. Um, here is Kiev, way up here on the top, the Black Sea, the Caspian Sea, the Mediterranean is over here. If we extended this down, Israel would be, you'd have uh, Israel be right about here, I think. So it's a big chunk of territory. It includes what would be called the Caucasus region here, countries like Georgia, maybe a little bit of Azerbaijan, uh, all of the uh, eastern side of the Ukraine, meaning the, uh, the eastern of the Dnipro River, and well into uh, what would be uh, the Don River region of uh, Russia, the Russian Empire, and out here into Kazakhstan. Very, very large territory in the 8th century. And um, the, uh, in fact, there is a, a very significant historian of the period, the late Omelian Pritzak of Harvard, who argued that Kiev itself was founded by Khazars, which is a great irony. If you can imagine that this, you know, the, Kiev is really the mother city of the entire Russian civilization, Ukraine, of course, Belarus, and the Russian Empire as well. And I think that it was originally a, a Jewish trading outpost is quite amazing. But, of course, in Kiev, so we minute. have a so lot. So he is telling you that his people, along with all of Russia and them, had converted to Judaism. Everybody understand that? And Judaism, write this word down, Judaism equals Phariseeism. Message. It's the same thing. It's talking about oral traditions of man and some Torah laws. That's what Judaism is. Oral traditions and Torah laws. They did a mix. So Judaism is Phariseeism. I have another book on that that explains it. How many, how long, uh, play on. Quite amazing. But of course, in Kiev, we have a lot of archeological sites and long-standing traditions that a certain place is called the Khazar Gate, and this is the Jewish quarter, and it goes back hundreds and hundreds of years, long before we have uh, Eastern European settlement moving into the region, a very, very old Jewish community over there. So you can see it's not an insignificant little territory that became Jewish. It was a really large territory at the time. I think that would probably be some like, something like the size of, let's say, France. It's a very large area, maybe France and Germany combined, actually. So, we, you know, people have been fascinated with lost Jewish tribes as long as there have been lost Jewish tribes. And that is basically from the 8th century before, well, I said 7th, but I meant the 8th century before the Common Era, when the 10 northern tribes were dispersed throughout the ancient Near East. And ever since then, various cultures of all, many cultures have purported to be the inheritors genetically culturally, historically, of those 10 lost tribes. But none of them have really been, you know, uh, demonstrated as accurate, although there is some Right, so he says the, the theory of the 10 tribes being them has not been proven, it's not been accurate, because he knows they are Kazarian. Go ahead. ...coming out with DNA analysis. Stop! Very DNA analysis is a fraud. In order to say you descend from King David, for example, whose DNA do you have to have? King, they ain't got none of their DNA. So it's all a sham. It's a hoax. Fraudulent. Play on. There's populations to try to determine uh, how likely it is that they are, in fact, Jewish. And especially in Africa, there have been several populations that have been dent identified as having a very high statistical relationship to uh, contemporary Jews. The Arab history. And this is why we don't go by DNA when it comes to proving who Israel is. Give me the next video, please. Next video. Yep, right there. Listen good. The Russians are fighting. 
the Khazarian Mafia in their homeland. They're cutting the head off the snake of the group that has been destroying this planet for generations. What does that have to do with Australia today, here and now? Because they control this country like they control everywhere else, and the Russians, along with many other nations and many other militaries, are actually fighting a subterranean war to exterminate vermin from the planet. Mandates and COVID are just one part of a larger scheme to depopulate the planet. We have been robbed, we have been raped, we have been killed for generations. And the mandate, directed by the government and enforced by the police and provided for by the big pharma, have been exterminating the people. Many it's of your all part of the same plan. Many of your former colleagues, previously of the Ozcons and many others, don't share the same views that you're speaking about today. In fact, they decry them and condemn them. Does that make you think twice about the path that you're on? <laughs> no, if they could read and write, put their heads out of their backsides, they would see for themselves. As we have said from the very beginning, do your own research, folks. As I've said many times, don't trust me. Make up your own mind. But read your own work. So he said the Ukraine that Russia's fighting are Kazarian uh, gangsters. That's what he said. He said they're Khazars. Okay, give me the next video. Most Christian Zionists in America have no idea that the people living in Israel are not native, mm. how, well, the area of Palestine, Israel, whatever you want to call it. They were not born there. They immigrated from Europe. Ashkenazi Jews. They were Ashkenazi Jews who came in from Europe and with the rifle took the land. They, God didn't give it to them. They, they took it at the point of a rifle shooting Arabs and they killed Muslims and Christians. They slaughtered them. Massacres. Women, children, horrible massacres. That is the history of Israel 1948 and I dare any Christian Zionist to prove me wrong, because I can show you the historical records of the massacres that took place in 48. It was horrible, absolutely horrible, the people who were killed. And because of that, the, the Arabs developed a, a fury, an anger that, that European Ashkenazis just flooded in to Palestine and violently pushed them off their land. All right. Christian Zionists From there, in America. Give me the next. It's a, it's a website. Now, give me the next one. Y'all remember? Mm, was that? No, no, no. It was. Was that it? Oh, I'm sorry. Give me Isaiah 29 20. I apologize. I it's see. Isaiah 2920, and then the site I want the Instagram that you just had up after we read the uh, scripture. Isaiah 2920, listen good to this. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 20. Uh, listen good. For the terrible one is brought to naught. The terrible one is Esau Edom. Read it again. For the terrible one is brought to naught, uh -huh. and the scorner is consumed. So the terrible one is also called the scorner. What are they scorning, scorning against? The word of God. They scorn against the scriptures. They scorn against God's truth. Go ahead. And all that watch for iniquity are cut off. Uh-huh. Read that part again. And all that watch for iniquity. All that watch for iniquity. They want you to sin. They want you to bear false witness. They want you to lie. Just calling them Jews. That's what they watch for. Because they know that's blasphemy when you identify them as Jewish people. Read it again. And all that watch for iniquity are cut off. Mm -hmm. That make a man an offender that for That make a, a man an offender? An offender for a word. For a word. Good. And lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate. And they lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate. Good. And turn aside the just for a thing of naught. So they want everyone to turn aside the just for a thing of naught. We're the just. They want everybody to turn us aside, turn aside the word of God, and join with them. That's not going to happen. Give me that video right there.
I want you to tell me if all these dots connect. Last week, Israel banned Al Jazeera, a major news publication, from publishing in their country. Not only that, Al Watan Tower, which is the hub of Al Jazeera in Gaza, along with some other media publications, was demolished by Israel last week. Boom, just like that, blown to smithereens. Then, Tony Blinken, the US Secretary of State, urge Gaza to censor Al Jazeera's coverage of the genocide currently taking place in Gaza right now, asking them to quote unquote, turn down the volume on Al Jazeera's coverage because it is full of anti-Israel incitement. Do they ever think maybe the anti-Israel sentiment is legitimate because this just happened today? Extremely disturbing. Al Jazeera's veteran journalist, Wael Dado's wife, son, and daughter were killed in an Israeli airstrike which targeted a shelter house that they had fled to while received the news while on air covering the non-stop Israeli strikes on Gaza. Just heartbreaking to watch. And they admitted to it. בדרך כלל אנחנו יודעים את המטרה, לדוגמה היום הייתה מטרה, משפחתו של כתב אל ג'זירה. אבל בדרך כלל אנחנו יודעים, במקומות שלא יודעים, אז אנחנו מחכים להודעות שלך. In fact, Israel has killed at least 24 journalists, most of them Palestinians, in just the last two and a half weeks alone. Which does beg the question, if they are deliberately targeting journalists and their families, what does Israel... So, from there, now let me show you what they do. We're still dealing with making man offended for the word, for a word. Now, y'all remember the Canary Mission, correct? Now, I was on page one. Now, look. Look who's on page one now. They got an update. Raise it up. What they did, raise it up, keep going. They are looking and trying to identify all the Palestinians in these videos to get them terminated from their jobs, okay, get them kicked out of their schools that they attend. That's what they're, that is their new thing. That, they've always been doing it, but now they amped it up. Probably hired another, a thousand more uh, people using facial recognition to get them kicked out of college, kicked out of high school, and terminated from their jobs. That's what these people do. So now, give me Second Chronicles 20, please. We're going to talk about the history of Megiddo. Write this down, M-E-G-I-D-D. All right, uh, History of Megiddo, M-E-G-I-D-D-O. We're going to look it up. Give me Second Chronicles 21st and 20. Let's read about Megiddo, Megiddo, Megiddo. I'm taking you on a long route. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth- Write that down, Tekoa, Tekoa. Read again. And they rose early in the morning and went forth in, into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. And that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endure forever. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. So the Lord turned Ammon and Moab against the Edomites. Go ahead. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. They fought each other. Go ahead. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked into the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Mm -hmm. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Bar Barakah, for they, there they blessed the Lord. 
Therefore, the name of the same place was called the Valley of Barakah unto this day. And they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. So Jehoshaphat got a lot of wealth from the dead bodies of Moab, Ammon, and uh, Seir, the um, Edomites. So it was once called the Valley of Barakir during the time when Chronicles was written. But then it later, write this down, it later became known as the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Because Jehoshaphat gathered all the wealth from the Valley of Barakah, okay? So, and this, and it tells you the location in verse 20, in the wilderness of Tekoa. Write that down. Okay, give me Second Chronicles 35, verse 19. Second Chronicles chapter 35, verse 19. In the 18th year of the reign of Josiah was this Passover kept. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against the, the Carchemish by Euphrates. And Josiah went out against him. But he sent ambassadors to him, saying, What have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? I come not against thee this day, but against the house wherewith I have war. For God commanded me to make haste. Forbear thee from meddling with God, who is with me, that he destroy thee not. Mm -hmm. So in other words, he's telling him to do what? Mind your business. Go ahead. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself, that he might fight with him, and hearken not unto the words of Necho from the mouth of God, and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. Write that down. The valley of Megiddo. That's where Josiah went to fight Pharaoh named Necho. Go ahead. Verse 23. And the archer shot at King Josiah. And the king said to his servants, have me away, for I am sore wounded. So King Josiah got jacked up during this war for not minding his business. Go ahead. His servants therefore took him out, that, out of that chariot and put him in the second chariot that he had. And they brought him to Jerusalem and he died. So what we got to learn from this, although the, the topic is Megiddo. If you see a group of Palestinians prote protesting, mind your business. That's right. You'll get hit upside the head with flagpoles. You'll be bleeding. Need an ambulance. You get a car. If you're wearing the Morgan David, you be get a car ran into your school. Mind your business. You be calling for backup while you screaming, we ain't no cowards. Come on, stop. <laughs> what verse we at? We're at the bottom of verse 24, Bishop. Go ahead. And was buried in one of the sepulchers of his fathers. And all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. And Jeremiah lamented for Josiah. And all the singing men and the singing women spoke of Josiah in their lamentations to this day and made them an ordinance in Israel. And behold, they are written in the Lamentations. So that Lamentations is not the same one that Jeremiah wrote. It's different. So what I want y'all to see is that they wept and mourned for Josiah. Where they mourned for him at? Where was this take place, brothers? Megiddo. Megiddo. Write that down. Give me that. Put that on the screen. Read that, Nechemiah. Megiddo. Easton's Bible Dictionary, Megiddo, place of troops. So it means place of troops. Go ahead. Originally, one of the royal cities of the Canaanites in Joshua 12, 21, belonged to the tribe of Manasseh, Judges 1, 27, but does not seem to have been fully occupied by the Israelites till the time of Solomon in 1 Kings 4, 12, 9, and 15. The valley or plain of Megiddo was part of the plain of Estralan, the great battle, battlefield of Palestine. It was here Barak gained a notable victory over Jabin, the king of Hazor, whose general Sisera led on the hostile army. Barak rallied the warriors of, of the northern tribes and under the encouragement of Deborah, the prophetess, attacked the Canaanites in the great plain. The army of Sisera was thrown into complete confusion and was engulfed in the waters of the Kishon 
which had risen and overflowed its banks. Judges 4 and 5. So you notice the great confusion amongst those armies is very similar to what we read in 2 Chronicles 35. So now, from there, let's go to Joel 3 and 2. Joel chapter 3, verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Where was the valley of Jehoshaphat, brothers? Right, Tekeo, which is it's the same area as Megiddo. It's the same area. Okay, read. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. Whom they have scattered among the nations. They scattered us among the nations. Hold that. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 64. So we can get a thought. How did they scatter, them, scatter us among the nations? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. So in these last days, they scattered us via the sub-Saharan slave trade and the transatlantic slave trade. Verse 68, please. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. With ships. With ships. With ships. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, uh -huh. thou shalt see it no more again. We wouldn't see it nor Egypt no more again. Go ahead. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. We shall be sold unto our enemies. For bondmen. For slave men. And bondwomen. And slave women. And no man shall buy you. No man shall redeem us from the curses God put on us. Everybody understand that, right? All right. Let's go back to Joel 3 and 2. Joel chapter 3 verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. The valley of Jehoshaphat. Remember we read earlier, the valley of Berechiah became known as the valley of Jehoshaphat, where Jehoshaphat got much riches. That was in Tekoa. That's right near Megiddo. Very similar area. Go ahead. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, mm -hmm. whom they have scattered among the nations. Go ahead. And parted my land. And see that? Read it again. And what? And parted my land. So they divided the land of Israel. Everybody understand that, right? Give me the map. Put that map on the screen. Can you zoom in? So that's where Megiddo is. That's where Megiddo is. Um, give me the next map so it's a little clearer. Y'all see in Israel, you see Megiddo right there. Megiddo is the root word of Armageddon, by the way, in case I didn't tell y'all. Write that down. Armageddon, Megiddo, same word. Okay. That's where it is right there. Right above the West Bank. Give me the photos. This is it here. You can see it. they got a photograph of the area. These are photos of the area where all the armies will be gathered together all right from there give me where i want to go next mm, revelation 16 and 12. revelation chapter 16 verse 12. and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river euphrates mm -hmm. and the water thereof was dried up and the waters of the euphrates river shall be dried up go ahead that the way of the kings of the east. Now there's dams all along Euphrates. All I can do is stop the water. Read that again. I'm sorry. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, mm. that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. See that? That the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Go ahead. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. Uh -huh. Come out of the mouth of the dragon. Write this down. Politics. Out of the mouth of the dragon is politics. Next. And out of the mouth of the beast. Write this down. Financial IMF and World Bank. That's their finance. So they control that. Read. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. Christianity. 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 
Read it again, verse 13. One more again. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So people are going to be fighting. Nations will be fighting for political reasons, financial reasons, and religion. Go ahead. For they are the spirits of devils. They are the spirits of what? Devils. Spirit of what? Devils. What, brothers? Devils. Devils. Go ahead. Working miracles. Working miracles. Go ahead. Which go forth unto the kings of the earth. Which go forth unto the kings of the earth. So their politics goes into the kings of the earth. Their financial policies go to the kings of the earth. And their religion goes to the kings of the earth. Read that part again. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle of that great day of God Almighty. Read. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches. So brothers, sisters, uh, that's why we adjure you all to watch. If we ask you who saw this and there's only eight of y'all uh, raising your hand, that means y'all not watching. You're watching rap music and basketball. You're going to get caught off guard. Read on. And keepeth his garments. To keep your garments means keep yourself in this book. Keep observing God's laws, his statutes, his commandments, or your laws. We can't help you. You're just sitting here wasting your time. This is just a hobby or a club or a hangout for you. Go ahead. Lest he walk naked. Lest you walk naked. Meaning, Give me that uh, for naked, Exodus 32, 25. Exodus chapter 32, verse 25. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. That's all I wanted. Going back to Revelation 16, 15. Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth. Blessed is he that watcheth. You got to watch using the Bible and what's happening in the world. Go ahead. And keepeth his garments. Your garments is the word of God. Like it says in, give me that precept in Romans 13, put you on the whole armor. That one, Romans 13, I forgot the verse. Might be around verse 13, 12, something like that. Romans chapter 13, verse 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Put on the armor of light. Y'all understand that? Verse 14, explain that in case you're confused. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. So when it says put on the armor of light, it means put on Christ. Read it again. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh. I mean, if you're watching TikTok videos of twerking, rap music, basketball, football, Atlanta Housewives, whatever the hell you got your head watching. Read it again. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh mm -hmm. to fulfill the lust thereof. Okay, let's go on back. Now, Revelation 16, and you was in 15, read 15 again. Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, mm -hmm. lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Come on. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Armageddon is where the word comes from the word Megiddo. Armageddon is where the word Megiddo is the root of the word. Everybody understand that? Give me Wikipedia, please. Put that on the screen. Arm Read that. Armageddon. According to the book of Revelation in the New Testament of the Christian Bible, Armageddon from ancient Greek, uh, Armageddon, late Latin, Armageddon, from Hebrew, Ha Megiddo. Har Megiddo. Y'all see Megiddo, right? It's the same word. That's what I want y'all to understand. So here it says Hebrew and Hebrew is Armageddon, but it comes from Megiddo. Go ahead is the prophesied location of a gathering of armies for a battle during the end times, which is variously interpreted as either a literal or a symbolic location. It's a literal location. I'm going to show you that too. Got it? The term is also used in a generic sense to refer to any end-of-the-world scenario. In Islamic theology, 
Armageddon is also mentioned in Hadith as the greatest Armageddon or al Mahuma al Kubra, the great battle. The Mount of Megiddo in northern Israel is not actually a mountain, but a tell, a mound or hill created by many generations of people living and rebuilding at the same spot. So that's the photo that I showed y'all earlier at the top right. Go ahead. On which ancient forts were built to guard the Via Maris, an ancient trade route linking Egypt with the northern empires of Syria, Anatolia, and Mesopotamia. Megiddo was the location of various ancient battles. Because it's a large area. Put that picture back on the screen. It's a large area. It goes all the way back there. Megiddo's not just that little mound you see right there. It goes all the way back there. And it's flat land. Flat land where you can fight. Go ahead. Including one in the 15th century B.C. and one in 609 B.C. The nearby modern Megiddo is Kibbutz in the Kishon River area. All right. From there, give me Matthew 24. We're going to talk about tribulation just for a moment. Tribulation. People talk about Christ could come back tomorrow. Well, we didn't go through tribulation f uh, yet. So that means he ain't going to come back till we go through this. Matthew 24. All I want is 9 and 10. Matthew chapter 24, verse 9. Then shall they deliver you to, up to be afflicted. See, now this happened back in the past, but it hasn't happened during this time. Read again. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, mm -hmm. and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And you shall be hated of all nations for Christ's name's sake. What verse was that? Nine. Go ahead. And then shall many be offended. When, they, when you Israelites see many of us getting put to death and in prison, many of you are going to be offended at the gospel. Go ahead. And shall betray one another. Many of you, like I already, those of you who are clueless in this class, you don't know what's going on, I already suspect that you're going to betray us later on. That's, that's where my mind goes. Read it again. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. And shall hate one another. And you're going to look for reasons. Oh, I hate you. Why? Oh, and you'll find some excuse. Whether it was correction, something your wife did, something your kid did. That's why you hate us, really. Just to justify the hatred within you and the betrayal that you're going to bring against Christ. Okay, later on down the line. Was that verse 10? Yes, sir. Give me uh, Matthew 10, 16. Matthew. Chapter 10, verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. So we're going, we, Christ is sending us out like sheep in the midst of wolves. Go ahead. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. Be wise as serpents, brothers. Go ahead. And harmless as doves. But be harmless. When it comes to doing evil, be harmless. Message. Go ahead. Hey, give me that precept in Romans. I think it's Romans 12. Anybody know what I'm talking about? 1619. Bear with me. Mm. Romans 1619, yes. Romans chapter 16, verse 19. For your, obe your, for your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good. Be wise when it comes to doing good, keeping God's laws. Be wise, go ahead. And simple concerning evil. And be simple concerning evil. Everybody understand that? So that's the precept right there. Let's go on back to Matthew 10, verse 17. Matthew chapter 10, verse 17. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the council. See that? Beware of men. They will deliver you. We have not gone through this yet. Go ahead. And they will scourge you in their synagogues. Uh-huh. And you shall be brought before governors and kings for mm. my sake. Y'all see that? Go ahead. For a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Uh-huh. Come on. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. You ain't got to worry about, let me plan what I'm going to say. Let me write down some scriptures. Don't worry about it, brothers, in that day. Sisters, don't worry about it. Go ahead. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. So the Lord's going to tell us what to say in that moment, in that hour. Okay, come on. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. Come on. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. So Christ said, don't even be so dependent on your brother. Because some, some of y'all got brothers that's no damn good. 
They hate the Bible. They hate everything about keeping God's laws. I got family like that, and I know y'all. some of y'all do too. Read that again. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. And the father, the child. Some of your fathers are no damn good. Okay. Like we see some of them, I call them the orphan camps. They got no father figures in their camps. All, the whole camp, the oldest one is like 25. You can't make this up. Because the their fathers, they, who, if they even know their father, their fathers are no damn good. So they look for groups that have no father figures so they could do whatever the hell, hell they want. What's that song? It's a hard life. Nah. Da, da. I, I don't know the words. Hard knock. Like, yeah, that's them. That's their theme song. Dun, 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 dun. No structure, no nothing. No law, nothing. No discipline. And believe me, there's a woman in the background calling the shots with some of those camps. Big mama. The prophetess said, okay. Damn. What verse we at? Verse 21, Bishop. Go ahead. And the children shall rise up against their parents. Mm -hmm. And call so some of your children, huh? The children shall rise up against their parents. Some of your kids, I don't care how cute they are today. They may grow up to become demons. What, what, what we tend, to, especially black women, what they tend to do, they misconstrue that little, cute, adorable baby that's right now, it might be five to eight, they're cute, they're adorable. But when they get 15 and 18, they're not that same child. That child, that cute, adorable child is gone. Satan's going, gotcha, bitch. I'm telling y'all straight. I've seen it. I've been in truth 30 years. I've seen kids grow up and become demons on earth. But they were so cute. They were so adorable. They didn't stay like that. And it's nothing you can say the parents did wrong. The parents had them in the truth, teaching them the Lord. But when they came of age, they decided, I don't want to do this no more. Read that again, Netshavai. And the brother shall, be, shall deliver up the brother to death. It's just like some of you husbands in here. You're only here because your wife has forced you to be here. Can I get a bomb on that one? I'm not getting a bomb because he know that's him. Damn! Damn! Now we get the bomb. I'm tough from what I've seen. Some of you men are only here. That's I don't. You officers, some of y'all are full of shit. I'm telling you straight. You purple. A lot of you purple shirts are full of shbs. Sugar honey iced tea. Can I say that one? That's nice. Sugar honey. I already said it, right? I'm gonna tell y'all straight. I'm from school to school. All right. Black shirts. We don't know you yet, but I'm I'm got my fingers crossed for y'all. Thumbs up to y'all. Cause the rest, a lot of them. I'm not saying all the purple shirts, but the vast majority of them brothers you see, they don't believe. They just say they want this side of the room. They want booty. Then when they get this woman, you don't see them no more. They don't see them no. Or they get that one job. Hey, bro, can I get a job? You hook them up with a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they're gone. They don't see you no hey, more. Bishop, that's why they ain't buying the books. There you go. Damn. There you go. Damn. Where we at now? Verse twenty-one. Come up. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. Now, if the if you if you in your feelings now, that means you what? You guilty. A hit dog will holler. When I, when the elders used to say that to us, it was like water off my back. I knew he wasn't talking to me. See, he ain't talking about me. He might be talking about you. He might be talking about you and you and you. He ain't talking about me. <laughs> Cause I knew what I believed in. But if you mad right now, that's because it's you, nigga. It's you. Where we at? I'm sorry. Verse 21. Okay. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. See that? You shall be hated of them. There's going to be a propaganda machine against this truth. Believe you me. Believe Christ. Believe what this book says. There will be a propaganda machine against this truth. What verse was that, Nichema? I'm sorry. Uh, 22, Bishop. Read on. But he that endured to the end <laughs> shall be saved. He that endured. Read that again. But he that endured to the end shall endure be saved. what? All that we just read. Being betrayed by your brother, by your kids, by your spouse, by your loved ones. Read again. But he that endured to the end shall be saved. Come on. But when they persecute you in this city, 
flee ye into another. This is why we got thing, we got that underground railroad set up. When things pop off in one city, there are places to go in the next city. Read again. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. So that part right there, ye, have not gone, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Meaning we will not have reached all Israelites. This is why the Lord said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Because we will not be able to reach everybody scattered to the four corners of the earth. Read on. <laughs> the disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master mm -hmm. and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, Lord of the flies, the devil, go ahead. How much more shall they call them of his household? So if they call Christ's names, they're going to call us names too. This is why I don't get bugged out when people be doing videos on me. Oh, he's a sellout. Oh, he's an agent. Okay, whatever. But I'm enduring in this truth. I'm keeping the commandments. It don't phase me. That's right. But I understand if they did it to Christ, they're going to do it to us. That's how y'all bro brothers got to be. You sisters got to be. What are you going to say? Take the blessings, Bishop. Take you them go. all. Take them all. Give me more blessings. Come on. Verse 26. Fear them not, therefore. Christ said, don't worry about them. Don't fear them. Go ahead. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, mm -hmm. and hid that shall not be known. Read. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. Hey, give me that precept. The one in, is it John 10? Uh, which says, uh, that just popped them. We read it last night. It said, uh, they went into the house and Christ told them plainly. Mark 4, Mark 4, thank you. Mark 4, here's the precept. Mark 4, verse 34. Mark, chapter 4, verse 34. Start at 33. Verse 33. And with many such parables... Me Parable means uh, illustrated story, dark sayings. Go ahead. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. He told them plainly exactly what them parables meant. Everybody understand that? So now that goes back to what we just read in Matthew 10 and verse 27. <laughs> Matthew chapter 10, verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the house. Think about it. Christ couldn't say, hey, Rome is the devil. Right. He couldn't say that plain in front of everybody. He'd be like, what? Kill him. They would have been killed him a long time ago. So what he did, he said parables. Then when he got privately with the disciples and he asked them, this is what I'm talking about. For example, let me give you an example. Matthew 24. Give me that. I'm going to give you an example. And verse, is it 15? Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. So standing in the holy place was the temple in Jerusalem. So who was the abomination of desolation? Who was that, brothers? So Christ is calling Rome, Christ is calling the white man the abomination of desolation. You don't, you don't think the people at that time was like, ooh the abomination what is he talking about i guarantee you the church stuff to this day they don't they don't know who the abomination of desolation is and they ain't trying to know christ is calling them the devil the bible speaks of so let's go on back to matthew 10 and verse 27 matthew chapter 10 verse 27 what i tell you in darkness that speak ye in light and what you hear in the ear that preachy upon the house. So Christ said, what I'm telling y'all in the dark, I want you to pronounce it plain before everybody. Go ahead. And fear not them. Oh, why you say that? Because what we're saying, people going to hate us. People going to say, you're terrorists. You are anti-Semites. You are Belzebub. You are this, you are that. Read it again. And fear not them which kill the body. Because they're going to want to kill us. Go ahead. 
but are not able to kill the soul. They can't touch the real us. They can't touch our soul. Go ahead. But rather fear him mm -hmm. who is which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That's the lake of fire. Go ahead. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. So death only comes once the father allows it. Nobody dies without the father saying, it's time. Go ahead. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. The very hairs of your head are numbered. Come on. Fear ye not, therefore. So he says it again. Don't be afraid. I'm telling you the second time. Fear ye not. Go ahead. Ye are, uh, you are more valued than many sparrows. Right. You're more valued than many sparrows. So by the time your, your death comes, Christ is telling them they're going to die. He says, don't fear. The father has all the hairs of your head numbered. You're more valued than them sparrows. Go ahead. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men. Confess me in what context? F confess him in terms of death. Under duress. Under stress. Everybody understand that? Go ahead. Him will I confess also before my father, which is in heaven. Come on. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my father, which is in heaven. In what context? Under duress, under stress, fear of life, fear of death. Some of you betray Christ just for a job's sake. So if you betray Christ for a job, how much more when it comes to life or death? Some of you betray Christ for your family's sake, your spouse's sake, your kid's sake. Your mama from there, Wisdom of Solomon 2.10. I will love my mama. I will love my mama. <laughs> Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 10. Let us oppress the poor. Now wait, read verse 1, then let's jump down so we know what we're talking about. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright. Mm -hmm. Let's jump down to verse 10. So we're talking about who, brothers? The ungodly, and particularly the white man. Go ahead. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us oppress the poor what? Righteous man. Righteous man. Go ahead. Let us not spare the widow, mm -hmm. nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. Read. Let our strength be the law of justice. They're using legislation against the just, against the righteous. That's why it says, let our strength be the law of justice. Whose justice? Their justice. They make up laws of anti-Semitism. Understand, there's over nine Semitic nations. But they'll make you think that the white man, the so-called Jewish man, is the only Semite on the planet. They'll make you think that the Palestinians are not even Semitic when the Palestinians are Semitic. That's why they don't let us on TV. They say, we need some dumb Negroes on TV. Hey, give me Cornell West. He's one of them smart, dummy Negroes. That's what I call them, a smart dummy. Because they're not smart when it comes to the word of God. Okay? A lot, a lot of those other motivational speakers that you see on YouTube using the big words. Okay? Who always talk about economics is the way. The, the economics, money is the way. Right. Those are uh, stupid. Those are smart dummies. House Negroes. Read that again. Let our strength be the law of justice. Uh-huh. For that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. So that which is feeble is talking about the Israelites, us. And they say they were nothing worth. Go ahead. Therefore, let us lie and wait for the righteous, because he is not for our turn. We're not for the white man's turn. Go ahead. And he is clean contrary to our doing. We are opposite to everything this white man has established. Go ahead. He abradeth us with our offending the law. We abrade him with him offending the law. The laws that they're uh, uh, making policies on are against God's laws. And we're not following those laws because they're not in conjunction with God's laws. Everybody understand that? Nation is men leading by example. You ever hear people say, going back to Nation is community. Got them laws from about down to now. Nation is children with robots. Where do you have the Bible? So when you hear black Christians, and they're all Nation is unity. We're not under the law. 
But when it comes to that white man, he pull out the penal code. They don't stand they for that shoot. just and dare say, Hey, John! Need that under the law. They respect that white man. He's best to believe their vision. Yes. They don't say the laws of God don't stand why they got a seat left. Exactly. Yeah. What's wrong with OC? <laughs> 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 they'll be going to jail doing big time for uh, manslaughter burglary assault kidnapping things of that nature stealing and nobody not one and them women and the mothers in the church will not they're in there because it's their kids if you had only taught that nasty child of yours God's laws they would not be in this trouble. We, we sit down. We have bro, I've watched the videos with the brothers sitting down with Christians with heads over in Hawaii. And a lot, I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of them often say, talk about the, the, the leaders, the imams over these groups, the Christian leaders, they often say, Let's, we can change things if we go on the street together arm in arm, and tell them not to kill. Brothers, let me tell you something. Your wor our words have no power. Our words have no effect. The young men and women amongst us got to know that it comes from thus saith the Lord. That's when judgment comes down on them. They will either conform to this or die by this. Everybody understand that? Because only this word will stand. Our little weak words, hey, bro, why are you killing? Pap, oh, shoot, oh, sh let me get out of here, bro. That's what's going to happen. You better use the word of God. Back to Wisdom of Solomon 2, please. Where you at? Verse 12. Go ahead. Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous, because he is not for our turn, and he is clean contrary to our doings. He upbraideth us with our offending the law, and objecteth, objecteth to our infamy, the transgressions, of our education. Right, because they study the Talmud. They don't study the Torah laws per se. Go ahead. He professeth to have the knowledge of God. Yes, we do profess to have the knowledge of God, which we do have. Go ahead. And he calleth himself the child of the Lord. And we are the child of the Lord. Give me that in Exodus 4.22 real quick. Exodus chapter 4 verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So yes, we are the child of the Lord. Everybody understand that? That's Go back right. to Wisdom of Solomon 2, 14. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 14. <coughs> he was made to reprove our thoughts. Yes, that's why we were made. Go ahead. He is grievous unto us, even to behold. They hate the way we look. Go ahead. For his life is not like other men's. Mm -hmm. His ways are of, of an, another fashion. We got a different diet. We got a different dress code. We got a different everything. Go ahead. We that are, goes back to Genesis 25. Two manner of people shall be what, brothers? Separated. Go ahead. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. Ah, you see that? We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. Give me that precept, Revelation 2.9. Counterfeit means fake, phony, fraud. For gazy. Thank you. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. I know the blasphemy. Put it on the screen. Of them which say they are Jews and are not. Go ahead. But are the synagogue of Satan. That's what Jesus Christ said. And this is what we always got to stress. It's not coming from us from any racial standpoint. Right. It's coming from the Bible. It's coming from the Hebrew scriptures. Go ahead. I mean, that was it. Go back. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 16. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstaineth from our ways at, as from filthiness. See that? He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. Hey, give me that Revelation 18, 4. What does it mean, we abstain from their ways as from filthiness? Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. See that? So come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her plagues, of her sins. So don't touch their holidays. 
Don't touch their custom. Don't touch their traditions. Go back. Wisdom of Solomon 2. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 16. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounceth the end of the just to be blessed. Our end shall be blessed. Go ahead. And maketh his boast that God is his father. Our end shall be blessed because we're going to rule the world. Everybody understand that? That's right. Come on. Let us see if his words be true. Ah, uh -huh. here it come. And let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. Mm -hmm. For if the just man be the son of God, he will help him. So if we the son of God, he's saying God will help them. Go ahead. And deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Mm -hmm. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture. Ah, so that's how the propaganda starts. Let us examine him with despitefulness. Then it says, and torture. So what we see when we read this, this is what the apostles, the disciples went through, and this is what we're going to go through in the end, these last days. 19, one more time. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture, that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. Read. Let us condemn him with a shameful death, for by his own saying he shall be respected. Mm -hmm. Such things they did imagine and were deceived. For their own wickedness had blinded them. So the wickedness of the white man and those of our people that follow him, their own wickedness will blind them. Go ahead. As for the mysteries of God. As for the mysteries of God. They knew them not. That's why the Christians don't know the Bible. So it's a waste of time. You try to sit down and prove who Babylon is, who Judah is, who Benjamin. They ain't going to see that. Read it again. As for the mysteries of God, they knew them not. Neither hope they for the wages of righteousness. Nobody hopes for the wages of righteousness, especially in the black church. They're not talking about New Jerusalem on earth. They want America to go on forever. Go ahead. Nor discern a reward for blameless souls. They don't discern a reward for blameless souls. Second Ezra 1670. So what I'm reading right now, put it on the screen, put those on the screen. These are things we must go through before Christ returns. All right, with 2nd Ezra 16, 70. 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 70. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection. A upon great you. insurrection upon who? Those that fear the Lord. If you fear the Lord, there's going to be a great insurrection against you, against us. Go ahead. They shall be like mad men. So then these people, these white folks, black folks, going to be like wild men. Read that again. They shall be like mad men. Mad men. Go ahead. Sparing none. They ain't going to spare you if they catch you. That's what Christ said. If they persecute you in this city, what do what, brothers? Flee to the next. You better have some place to go. That's what we do, and That's what we're setting up. Come on. But still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. Uh-huh. For they shall waste and take away their goods. They're going to waste and take away your goods. Go ahead. And cast them out of their houses. Right. There's going to be laws set up. There's going to be legislation set up. Where if you are guilty of hate speech, if you are guilty of anti-Semitism, you'll lose your job, you'll lose your wages, you'll lose your home, your, your houses, your properties. Read that again. For they shall waste and take away their goods uh -huh. and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, mm -hmm. and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. So we're going to be tried like gold in the fire. Joel chapter 2 verse 15. So when all this has taken place, Joel 2.15, please. Joel chapter 2, verse 15. Uh -huh. I, this is why we, when brother be saying, Christ might come back tomorrow. No, he ain't. Because there's prophecy that must be fulfilled first. Go ahead. Blow the trumpet in mm. Zion. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Come on. Sanctify a fast. Fa sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. They call a solemn assembly. Come on. Gather the people, mm -hmm. sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breast. Get everybody, go ahead. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber. And that brother and sister that's getting married, tell them to tell with that, come on here and fast, go ahead. And the bride out of her closet. Go ahead. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Weep between heaven and earth, go ahead. And let them say, watch this, spare thy people. So this goes to what we were just reading. There's going to come a point where we're going before the Lord, fasting, crying and praying, asking the Lord, spare thy people. Why? Because we're going to see a whole lot of death. We're going to see brothers and sisters getting killed. Read that again. Spare thy people, O Lord, 
and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Come on. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Where is their God? This is supposed to be the children of God. Where is the, how come their God ain't helping them? Go ahead. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land uh -huh. and pity his people. Uh -oh. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. So we're going to get a word from on high. He's going to tell us, don't worry, I got you. That's what the priests are going to be telling the people. Never give up, never give in. Everybody understand that? Don't give up when you see death on the horizon. Don't be a scared because it's coming. Go ahead. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Watch this. But I will remove far, far off from read you. Read it again. Read it again. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. So the one, the great insurrections, are gonna, when they're coming against us, it's the northern army. That's America's police state. That's their military. God says, read again verse 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. So he's going to make something pop off in the Middle East where their military ain't going to be focused on us, the Israelites. So what I'm showing you, watch this, what I'm about to say. Hold that, hold that. We're coming back in at Jeremiah. Give me Second Thessalonians, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3, is it? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child. So what I want you to see is cometh upon them as a travail as a woman with child. Travail as a woman with child. Them birthing pains. Birthing pains may be 30 minutes apart, down to 20 minutes apart. Now, when he gets that painful kick, all that pain in that belly, then it calms down just for a moment. Then the pain comes back. Then it calms down for a moment. Then the pain comes back. Then it calms down for a moment. And then women are going. Whoo, 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 whoo. So the birth pains may be 30 minutes apart to 20 minutes apart, 10 minutes apart, 5 minutes apart, 4 minutes apart, 3 minutes apart, 2 minutes apart. Then the baby comes. So likewise in this world, the Lord is telling us, this world, the turmoil that y'all see that we're going to be involved in is going to be like travailing a woman. The troubles may be five years apart to four years apart, three years apart to two years apart to one years apart. So in, in between that, the, the turmoil is going to calm down. And we going to be going, whoo, whoo, whoo. like right now, things is popping off over in the Middle East. And we watch it, but after a while, that's going to calm down. And we're going to be going, whoo, whoo. and some of y'all are going to be going, hey, nothing going on. I'm going back into the world again. Yep, 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 yep. Yes. So now from five years to four years to three to two to one, then it's going to get down to 12 months apart, 10 months apart, eight months apart, six months apart. Four months apart, two months apart, then boom, Armageddon. And you're going to see Christ coming through them heavens. So what I wanted y'all to see, now go back to where we was at, but I will move verse 20, Joel 2.20. Joel chapter 2, verse 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. Stop. So we're going to be going, whoo, whoo, whoo. we got a break. Some of you going to be on the run. You're going to go back into the world trying to hide. Read that again, verse 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army uh -huh. and will drive him into a land barren and desolate mm -hmm. with his face toward the East Sea. With his face toward the East Sea. Hey, can you find me a map? Hey, say what you're going to say while they look for a map. I want to show a map of Israel that shows the Dead Sea in the Mediterranean. You could Google it maybe. Hey, some brothers and sisters, Bishop, because they were just showing Ukraine and Russia speaking about peace treaties. Mm. So you know a lot of brothers and sisters, oh, oh, good, good, good. Nah, man, to hell with that. Hasten this thing. Let's get it right. popping, man. Exactly, exactly. You can put that up. That's fine. It's an old map, but you see the Mediterranean right there. It's on the coastline of Israel, and you can see the Dead Sea. Put it, can you put a highlight on the Dead Sea? Right there at the bottom next to Reuben, right there is the Dead Sea. So when we go back to Joel 2, verse 20 again. Joel chapter 2, verse 20. But I will, remo will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land 
Barren and desolate. Barren and desolate, go ahead. With his face toward the East Sea. That's the Dead Sea, go ahead. And his hinder part toward the utmost sea. That's the Mediterranean Sea. The utmost sea is the Mediterranean Sea, go ahead. And his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up. But he hath done great things. Because he hath done great things, meaning evil things. Oh, so what I want y'all to see is that the Lord is going to be magnified, okay? So from there, Jeremiah 49 and 20. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he had taken against Edom and his purposes that he had purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Stop, put the next map up on the board. Put it on the screen. Y'all see Edom, right? And you can see Teman right there. Read again. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he has taken against Edom and his purposes that he has purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Mm -hmm. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. The least of the flock shall draw them out. Israel is the least of the Edomite nations. That's the least of the flock. It says, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Who's the them? Edom. Go ahead. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. See that? Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. So their land's going to get destroyed too. Watch this. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. Go ahead. At the cry, the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Their noise was heard in the... F Read that again. I'm sorry. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. At the cry, the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Can we put a map with a... That's, that's the Red Sea right there. Thank you. Put it on the screen. That's the Red Sea right there. So that's the area, brothers, right there where these things are going down. Do everybody understand that? This is the region where Armageddon's going to take place. Okay? Because right above, right in that area, you got Megiddo. That's that whole area. So read on. The earth is moved at the noise of their, of their fall. At the cry, the noise there was heard in the Red Sea. Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle. That's America. Read it again. Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle. So they're coming. Dun, 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 dun. Here comes America. Big brother's coming. Go ahead. And spread his wings over Bozra. Y'all see where Bozra is, right? Y'all see where Bozra is? Everybody see that? Go ahead. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pain. So they're going to be like the heart of a woman. Give me Joel 3 and 12. Watch this. Joel 3 and 12. Joel chapter 3 verse 12. Let the heathen be waked and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Ah, see that? Let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. That's exactly, hey, hey. Uh, put, give me the next map. The Valley of Jehoshaphat. See where we got Megiddo at? It's that same area, that same region. See where I got Euphrates and you got Megiddo right there? From there all the way up to the um, Euphrates River. Israel's in that right there. Israel's right there where Megiddo is. The land up towards Damascus, Syria, Lebanon, all of that. That's the region right there. Read that again. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Go ahead. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. There will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Go ahead. That's the eight. Verse, jump over to verse two. Verse two. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Verse 12 again. Verse 12. Let the, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Mm -hmm. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get ye down, for the press is full, the fats overflow. 
for their wickedness is great. Hey, here's the precept. Give me Revelation 14 and 15 and read the 20. Revelation chapter 14, verse 15. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Mm -hmm. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth. Hey, can y'all put an image of a sickle? S-I-C-K-E-L-E. -E. A sickle. Yeah. That's the sickle right there. Put it on the screen. I like the the one at the bottom right. Right, yes. That one right there. Yeah, that's the sickle right there. So they I know exactly what he's talking about. So read on. Thrust in. Verse 16. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire. Power over fire. This is where they get people like the human torch from. They read the Bible and say, hey, there's an angel that who had power over fire. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth. For her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trod without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. That's that whole area that's going to be covered with blood. Let's go on back now to Joel. Joel 3 and 13. Joel chapter 3 verse 13. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get ye down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Come up. Multitudes. Multitudes in the valley of decision. See that? In the valley of decision. It's still Now it's calling the valley of Jehoshaphat the valley of decision. Because God's going to make the ultimate decision between his people and his land. Go ahead. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth will shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people. See that? But the Lord will be the hope of his people. Remember what we just read in Joel 3, verse 3 down. They sold the Lord's people into what? Into slavery. Go ahead, which we are still to this day. Read again. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people. And the strength of the children of Israel. Come on. So shall you know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. Why does it say that? Because in verse 2, read verse 2 one more time. I will also gather all nations and will, and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So the land was parted between the Palestinians and Edomites. Okay. So now go back to that verse we was just at, verse 17. Verse 17. So shall you know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. There's going to be no other nations that ever come through that land ever again. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine, mm -hmm. and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and a fountain shall come forth out of the house of the Lord, and, sh and shall water the valley of Shittim. Mm -hmm. Egypt shall be a desolation. So when it says Egypt shall be a desolation, that's not talking about the literal Egypt. How do we know that? Because somebody might say, well, how do you know it's not the literal Egypt? Because in Zechariah, get Zechariah real quick, 14, 16. This is how we know. 
Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Come on. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts. So everybody going to have to come up to worship the king. Go ahead. Even upon them shall be no rain. You will, it'll be a drought in your land. Go ahead. And if the family of Egypt. Oh, go, oh, oh. And if the family of Egypt. Go ahead. Go not up. Uh-huh. And come not that have no rain. So that's letting you know people will be living in the land of where, brothers? Egypt. So what is the Egypt that shall be a desolation? Give me Jeremiah 51, 29. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 29. And the land shall tremble in sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon, to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. Y'all see that? So it's talking about Babylon. Babylon is the land that shall be a desolation without an inhabitant. And Babylon is the United States of America. People, how do you know that? Give me that real quick. Zechariah 2, 6. Zechariah 2, 6. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north. The land of the north is North America. Go ahead. Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. Now it's calling the north, the land of the north, the daughter of Babylon. The daughter of Babylon is Edom. Y'all remember that? Psalms 137, verse 7 and 8. We ain't going to get it today. Let's go on back to Joel 3. I just wanted to clear those parts up. 319, one more again. Joel, chapter 3, verse 19. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness. Now, go ahead, I'm sorry. For the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. So now, now, people use that. Well, they don't use this, but this is the precept to Deuteronomy 23.7. Read that real quick. I think it's Deuteronomy 23.7. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7. Uh, Y'all get familiar with this law, go ahead. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. We don't. We're at peace with all men. Go ahead. For he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou was a stranger in his land. So now, y'all see that verse right there? The precept is what we just read in Joel 3, 19. Read it again. Joel chapter 3, verse 19. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness. For the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. Go ahead. But Judah shall dwell forever. See that Judah shall dwell forever. Go ahead. And Jerusalem from generation to generation. Read. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. He's going to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's so heavy right there. It's not only talking spiritually. It's talking physically also because we're going to have our new bodies. Go ahead. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. Y'all see that? From there, from there, Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14 and verse 1. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Stop. Who can explain that verse? Oh, let me get, um, no. Asa, explain that verse. Uh, I say, behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. So we just read that God is in the midst of Israel. So the, the spoil is talking about. Jerusalem. What does it mean? Oh, uh, it's going to be divided. The land going to be divided by the Palestinians and Okay, so, you, so you're giving me two different answers. You see that, right? 
You gave me two different answers. Which one is correct? The second one that I said. Right, the, the land, second the one. Joel, three and two, one more time. Read. Joel chapter 3, verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations here comes. and parted my land. So the word parted there in Zechariah, he uses the word divided. Go back to Zechariah 14 one, one more time. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. Was it one, Bishop? Yes, one. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. So the spoils talk about the land that's going to be divided, the land that's parted. Everybody understand that? I hope y'all taking good notes. Read. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. See, this is saying the same thing Joel chapter 3 is saying. Go ahead. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. The women are raped. Go ahead. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. Meaning prisoners of war. Go ahead. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. There's still going to be people there, them heathen that's still there. They're still going to be there. Now remember in the land, not only do you have Edomites and Arabs, you also got Israelites there. You got our people in Demona that's there. You got the Ethiopians, which is our people that's there. And you got the refugees from Sudan, Chad, and Ghana that's there too. The Afro-Palestinians are there. Everybody understand that? Read. Verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. So when Israel pops off, when everything pops off there, the, the, all the nations are going to gather against it. America is going to come to Israel's rescue, or so they think. And when that, when that happens, that's when the Lord's going to come back. Read. And his feet shall stand. In wait, 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 wait. Read verse 3 again. Verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Uh -huh. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem Stop. on the east. Stop. Stop. Give me the next map. Yes. Put it on the screen. Do y'all see where the Mount of Olives is? So when people tell you it's not happening over there, that's, ex that's the exact region it's going to happen. They say, no, Israel's not going to be the cause of the Yes, God is telling you that is the problem. That is where Christ is going to land with his big black boots on the ground and crush everybody. That is the region right there. That is the Valley of Jehoshaphat. That is Megiddo. That is Armageddon. That's all of that right there. There, from Israel all the way up. That's where all the nations are going to be. Everybody see that? I hope you understand. Verse 4, one more again. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. Can y'all give me some images of Christ now? He's standing there with a sword or something. Oh, God, that ain't Christ. Yeah, those images right there. Go ahead, read it again. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof. See that part? The Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof. Go ahead. Toward the east. Toward the east. And toward the west. Toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. Uh -huh. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north. And half of it toward the south. Now this earthquake is going to be so tremendous. Y'all can stop the images there. It's going to be so terrible. That earthquake is going to reach to this side of the world. Give me that in Revelation 11. I think it's 11, if I'm not mistaken. I want that earthquake. Revelation 11 and verse... That's not 11. Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. The point is 13, but we're going to start at 11. And after three days and a half, 350 years, the spirit of life from God entered into them. Mm -hmm, the, Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, come on. And they stood upon their feet, Read. 
and great fear fell upon them which saw them. That's what we're seeing now. They're starting to hate us, build propaganda against us. Go ahead. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. This is deliverance. This is what the church calls the rapture. He's only talking about the Israelites. Go ahead. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. Uh -huh. And their enemies beheld them. Well, here come. And the same hour the was... The same time, the same hour is the same time as our deliverance, go ahead. Was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. That's the same earthquake. Go back, go back, go back to Zechariah 14, verse 5. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 5. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azai. Yea, ye shall flee like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Mm -hmm. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. That was it. That was it. And all the saints, that's the part, and all the saints with thee. That's what we read in Revelation. From there, from there, from there. Give me Matthew 24, 15. I think we read this earlier, but I want to read it again. <laughs> Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. So that is the white man in our land. Was that it? No, sir. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Jump down to verse 25. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Oh, this, people are going to say this about Christ. He's in Arabia. He's in the three Abrahamic faiths. Go over there. Go ahead. Go not forth. Don't go. Go ahead. Behold, he is in the secret chamber. He's in the secret chambers. Believe it not. Mm -hmm. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Y'all see that right there? Go ahead. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Where those dead bodies are, that's where the eagles are. That's Armageddon. When, you're, when you got dead, eagles eat dead things. The carcasses. Eagles, vultures, they're all in that similar family. Birds of prey. So Christ says, read again verse 28. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Now, we're going to get the precept in Revelation 19. Right, not right now. Y'all just remember it. Write it down. Revelation 19. Let me just get it real quick because I know somebody's going to ask me later on. I didn't get that precept, Bishop. Give me that in Revelation 19 about the earth birds. 19.17. Revelation chapter 19, verse 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, and flesh of the captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. So let's go back now. So when, when, during the battle of Armageddon, this last war, there's going to be a lot of dead bodies, hundreds and thousands and thousands of dead bodies, and the birds is going to feast on them. So in Matthew 24, and 28 again? Matthew <laughs> chapter 24, verse 28. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Read. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. So the tribulation is the tribulation that we're going through. He says immediately after the tribulation in those days. Go ahead. Shall the sun be darkened, mm -hmm. and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. Uh -huh. I'm talking about their missiles. That's what it's talking about. Stars is their missiles. Go ahead. And the powers of heaven, of the heaven, shall be shaken. War, nation against nation. Go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. You see that? That's when Christ returns. So they know, oh, he might come tomorrow. No. It's going to be in the midst of World War III that the Bible calls Armageddon. And we have to go through tribulation first. Then Christ is going to come. Everybody understand that? I don't want to hear no Christian confusion ever up in here. I hear, Christ might come tomorrow. Really? So he's going to just disannul all the prophecies. Yeah. And you're just going to get the kingdom. That's that Christianity. Read. 
And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Because we're going to see when we're going to cry. Go ahead. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Right. Come on. And he shall I ain't got no pictures on the screen. They looking at me and we reading these heavy scriptures. There's no one scripture of no picture. Oh, God. Oh, Lord in heaven. Lord, help me. Why do you, you have 15 you people over there? You got 15 people we over there. And... We're going to rectify it. Okay. Uh, where are we at, Netramai? Where are we Verse at? Verse 31. Uh, you want to read 30 again? Yeah, please. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. We're going to see the power of the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Go ahead. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Mm -hmm. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. That's right. From there, Luke 21, 25. Luke 21, 25. Hey, uh, Read change yeah. Netramiah's mic. His mic sounds bad on YouTube. Change it. All right, let me know when we get it. Everybody keeping up? All right, all right. So this is going to be a great day. This is going to be a great day. We just got to endure to the end. That's right. Endure to the end. Luke chapter 21, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations. So when you see distress of nations, Christ is warning us, look for that, look for that. If you're watching Basketball Wives, if you're watching sports, you're going, to be, you're going to miss this right here. Go ahead. With perplexity, uh -huh. the sea and the waves roaring. Don't we see perplexity now? People like, why are uh, Edomites and Arabs fighting over there? Yep. They're perplexed. Nobody knows. Nobody. You hear all these different stupid answers when the Bible gives you the answer. Read it again. Verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations uh -huh. with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. Read. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Why? And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. See that part right there? And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. That's the white folks. How do I know that? Because the vast majority of y'all, y'all not looking for these things. But I remember Captain Yao was telling me he was on the street teaching this last week. He said, have y'all heard? So there was a group of black people, men and women, have y'all heard about Hamas? What's that, a sandwich? Is that a sandwich? A, a new strain of weed. Then. Yeah, a new strain of weed. He said, okay, what about Hezbollah? They said, is that a dance club, brother? He said, all right, uh, Sexy Red. Yeah, yeah, we heard about her. Yeah, we know. Talk, what are you going to say about Sexy Red? Our people is on the bottom. I don't care how you feel. We are on the bottom of all nations. You don't get no nation lower than us. The utter stupidity of our people. I mean, you hate to say it, but it's true. So the white man said, you get in your feelings, but listen, walk out on the street and talk to the average Negro. You hear the stupidest thing. Even some of y'all in here, we talked. So, oh God, I got to go. I can't. I can't. It's, you, you, it's unimaginable what I'm hearing. Real talk. Read that again. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Uh-huh. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The powers of heaven shall be shaken. That's war. Come on. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud. I want y'all to see. It says men's hearts falling, failing for fear, for looking for the things coming on the earth. Powers of heaven being shaken. Then verse 27 one more time. And then. And then. And then. And then. And then. And then what? Shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud. With power and great glory. So how are we going to skip over all that and say, Christ might come back tomorrow. He might come back tonight. No, no. Stop that stupid black Christian talk. These prophecies must come to pass first. Everybody understand that? Read. 
And when these things begin to come to pass. And brothers, when you see these things start to come to pass, do what? Then look up. It says look up. Go and, ahead. And lift up your head. Lift up your heads. Why? For your redemption draws nigh. Y'all see that right there? Your redemption draws nigh. That's what the Lord is telling us. They did a spoof called Don't Look Up. Yes, yes, the white yes, man did a joke and said, Don't look up. But God says, You better look up. Be That's awake right. and be aware. Hold your, Hold your heads high. Zechariah 12 11. Zechariah 12 11. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 11. In that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem. Uh huh. As the morning of Hadid Rimon uh -huh. in the valley of Megiddo. Megid, Megiddo. Can you put Megiddo back up on the screen? Can you put the mic? I mean, not the mic. I'm sorry. The map. No, I want the map. Right there. Read again. In that day shall there be a great morning in Jerusalem. As a morning. Let's start up at verse 9. Verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. So it's, we're going in the same context of what we've been reading. Go ahead. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. So now when that happens, when verse 9 is taking place, when the Lord is fighting and destroying all nations, we're not here. We've gone through tribulation already. We've been taken up like we read in Revelation 11. So verse 10 is where we are in the wilderness. Read that verse 10 again. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Mm -hmm. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. So we're going to look at Christ because now by this time he's wiped the nations clean. We've been in the wilderness for, it doesn't say how long we're going to be there, but evidently he's going to show up and plead with us, talk with us face to face. And it says, we're going to look upon him, they have pierced, read. And shall be in bitterness for him, uh -huh. as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. So we're going to weep and cry when we see the Lord, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Go ahead. In that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem, as the mourning of Hadidramon in the valley of Megadon. In the valley, y'all see that? In Meg Megadon or Megidon. Okay, now that's when Josiah got killed. Okay, everybody understand that? That's what we read earlier. That was in Megiddo. Now notice there's an N there. It says Megiddo. It's talking about the same place, though. Okay, real quick, precept, Revelation 16, 16. Here's the precept. <laughs> Revelation chapter 16, verse 16. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. So go back now to Ver Zechariah 12, 11. It's the same location. Zechariah Put the map on the screen so they can see it, Megiddo. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 11. In, the day, in that day shall there be a great morning in Jerusalem, as the morning of Hadidramon in the valley of Meg Megiddo. Megiddo is Megiddo, that region right there. It's still in the land of Israel right there. Okay, read on. You can take the map down now. Go ahead. And the land shall mourn. Every so we're going to mourn as if when we were there in Megiddo, when we mourned for Josiah's death. Go ahead. Every family apart. <laughs> Read the, the verse again, verse 12. And the land shall mourn. Every family apart. The family of the house of David apart. And their wives apart. And the family of the house of Nathan apart. And their wives apart. So there's going to be women that make it too. I know some brothers, y'all think no women going to make it. There's going to be a lot of women there. Now, I'm not saying all these women coming from America, but women, a lot of women's going to be there. Read that again. Read that again. And the land shall mourn, every family apart, the family of the house of David apart, and their wives apart, and the family of the house of Nathan apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart, and their wives apart. The family of the house of Shimei. Shimei is Simeon. Go ahead. Apart. And their wives apart. All the families that remain, every family apart. And their wives apart. So from there, give me Genesis 12 and 3, please. So we're going to be delivered. We are going to be delivered. That's right. 
That's right. Zechariah 12, I mean Genesis, I'm sorry, 12 and 3. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them, curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. The only ones that's going to be blessed are those nations that have blessed us. Talking about the real 12 tribes of Israel. Everybody understand that? The ones that's, a lot of them are going to get cursed though because the vast majority of them have cursed us. Now what we're reading here in Genesis 12 and 3 is saying the same thing in the book of Numbers. Now that part where it says, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed is explained in the book of Acts. Uh, is it chapter 3, verse 325? Get that for me real quick. Acts chapter 3, verse 25. Ye are the children of the prophets. So that's how it starts off. You are the children of the prophets, go ahead. And of the covenant which God made with our fathers. And of the covenant which God made with our fathers, go ahead. Saying unto Abraham. Saying unto Abraham. And in thy seed. And in thy seed your children shall go, all the kindred. Actually, the, ch the, ch the seed there is actually Christ. And in thy seed, write that down. Read that. Again, ye are the children of the prophets. Mm, that's us. And of the covenant which God made with our fathers. That's us. Go ahead. Saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed. The seed is Christ. Shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Because why? We're going to be scattered throughout all the nations of the earth. Everybody understand that? That's Deuteronomy 28, 64. If you're wondering that we're going to be scattered in all nations. James 1 and 1 to the 12 tribes. What, brothers? Scattered abroad. Very good. Okay, Numbers 24, 3 to 9. Numbers 24, 3 to 9. Numbers chapter 24, verse 3. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, has said, and the man whose eyes are opened hath said. So this dude was a witch. He's dealing with the left-hand side of the Lord, and he had a vision. His eyes was open, and he saw a vision. Go ahead. He has said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. So he fell into a trance, but his eyes was open. Go ahead. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel, mm -hmm. as the valleys are they spread forth, as gardens by the river's side, as the trees of line alone, which the Lord hath planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. He shall pour the, the water out of his buckets, and his sea shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag. Meaning taller. His king, the king of Israel, shall be tall, taller, higher than Agag. Go ahead. And his kingdom shall be exalted. Now, hold that, hold that. To show you how tall is Christ is going to be. Second Ezra 2.43. Our king is going to be taller than Agag. Agag was a giant. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 43. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. Read. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing. Put off the mortal clothing, these bodies, Scott. And put on the immortal. And put on the immortal, the new bodies, Scott. And had confessed the name of God. Uh -huh. Now are they crowned. Now are they crowned, come and on. And receive palms. Uh -huh. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of God. It is the Son of God. Go ahead. Whom they have confessed in the world. That's Christ. So now let's go back to Numbers 24 and 7. Numbers chapter 24, verse 7. He shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his sea shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath as it were, the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nations 
his enemies mm -hmm. and shall break their bones. Christ is going to break their bones, come on. And pierce them through with his arrows. Go ahead. He couched. Talking about Israel, go ahead. He lay down as a lion and as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Come on. Blessed is he that blessed thee. And cursed is he that cursed thee. So that's what Balaam saw regarding the 12 tribes of Israel. Jeremiah 46. And 27. Jeremiah chapter 46, verse 27. But fear not thou. So fear thou not. Go ahead, read it again. But fear not thou, uh -huh. O my servant Jacob. So the Lord is telling us again, don't be afraid. Why? Because things is going to come that will put us in fear. He says, fear not thou, O my servant Jacob. Go ahead. And be not dismayed, O Israel. Come up. For behold, I will save thee from afar off. He said, I will save thee. I will save thee. I will save thee from afar off. Go ahead. And thy seed from the land of their captivity. He's saying, don't be afraid because he's going to save our seed from the land of our captivity. Go ahead. And Jacob shall return. Uh-huh. And be in rest. Uh-huh. And at ease. Uh-huh. And none shall make him afraid. Nobody ever again is going to make us afraid. Come on. That's right. Fear thou not, O Jacob, uh -huh. my servant, saith the Lord. For I am with thee. The Lord said, I'm, a, I'm with you. Go ahead. For I will make a full end of all the nations. All these nations you see, I'm going to make a full end of them. I'm going to eventually destroy every last one of them. Go ahead. Whither I have driven thee. Uh-huh. But, but, but I will not make a full end of thee. Uh-huh. But correct thee in measure. Yet will I not leave thee wholly unpunished. This is why we're still in our little punishment. He said, but listen, although I, I punish you in measure, I'm going to destroy all the other nations around you. Everybody see that? I hope you understand. I hope you rejoice in that thing. Habakkuk 3 and 9. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 9. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 9. Watch this. Thy bow, <laughs> the, bow, thy bow, bow was made quite naked according to the oath of the, of the tribes. Even thy word. So it's talking about the word of God. Thy bow was made quite naked, meaning the Bible's obvious, it's clear, it's plain to his servants. Go ahead. Selah, thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. Mm -hmm. The mountains saw thee, and they trembled. The nations saw thee and trembled. Go ahead. The overflowing of the water passed by. Come on. The deep uttered his voice mm -hmm. and lifted up his hands on high. Read. The sun and moon stood in their habitation. So you got to see, imagine this. When the Lord returns, because that's what it's talking about, the sun and the moon going to stand still. You know what that means? Time will stop. Go ahead. At the light of thine arrows they went, uh -huh. and at the shining of thy glittering spear. Read. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Indignation means righteous anger. Go ahead. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. He's going to thresh the heathen. Can you put some threshing pictures up there for me? He's going to thrash the heathen in anger. Okay. Can you give me the one with Christ threshing, please? Hello? Oh, they don't know the word threshing means destroying the nations? It means destroying the nation. Okay, those images right there. All right, read again. I'm sorry. Yeah. Verse, right. verse 12. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. Come on. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. I want y'all to see that right there. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. He's not coming to save all nations on the earth. He said, I'm only coming to save my people. Go ahead. Even for salvation with thine anointed. Read. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. Come on. By discovering the foundation unto the next. He's going to destroy the head nation. Go ahead. Selah. Thou didst strike through with, the, with his staves, the head of his villages. Come on. They, they came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. So all the nations going to come out as a whirlwind to scatter Christ. Go ahead. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. I want you all to see that right there. Their rejoicing was to devour us secretly. Okay. They're not going to come out and say, we hate the Israelites. They're going to say, listen, we want peace in, amongst the nations. Um... We just need them to stop uh, what they're doing, anti-Semitism. It's hate speech. They're going to use words like that, trigger words, to get the nation um, against us. 
So that's what it means. Uh, their rejoicing was to devour us, devour the poor secretly. That goes with the bad foods they give us, the worst education they give us. It's all done secretly, okay? From there, from there, from there. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Give me uh, uh, 2 Ezra 13 and 1. We're almost done. 2 Ezra 13 and 1. 2 Ezra chapter 13, verse 1. And it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea, that it moved all the waves thereof. Mm -hmm. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. Mm, with the angels, go ahead. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. So when Christ returned, he's just going to look, and everything's going to tremble under him. Go ahead. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, mm -hmm. all they burned that heard his voice. Everything that hears his voice going to burn. For example, he's going to say something like, thou shalt not commit adultery. If you are guilty in that, guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to burn. Talk about all those militaries of the world. Thou shalt not steal. Whoever did that, they're going to burn. Thou shalt not murder. Whoever is guilty of that, they're going to burn. Men, women, everybody in that mili those militaries going to burn when he just He's going to utter the laws of God. As we go down, I'm going to tell you, he's going to speak the laws of God. Read. Like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. Mm -hmm. And after this I beheld, and lo, there, were, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number. Meaning you could not number this amount of men, of military men. Go ahead. From the four winds of the heaven. See where they're coming from? From the four winds of heaven to do what? To subdue the man that came out of the sea. That came to subdue the man that came out of the sea of space is talking about. Go ahead. But I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. What's the mountain he flies upon, brothers? Mount of Olives. Only ten of y'all remember that? What's the mountain, brothers? The Mount of Olives. Read. But I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not. He said he couldn't tell. Go ahead. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid. Uh huh. And yet durst fight. See that? Although they're going to be afraid, like, remember what we read? It said they're going to be like, what? Women. It says, yet they're going to durst fight. Go ahead. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword nor any instrument of war. Mm -hmm. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire. That's right, come on. And out of his lips, a flaming breath. Mm -hmm. And out of his tongue, he cast out sparks and tempests. Come on. And they were all mixed together. They were all mixed together. The blast of fire. The blast of fire. The flaming breath. The flaming breath. And the great tempest. And the great tempest. And fell with violence and upon he the fell multitude. With, and fell with violence. Not He ain't kissing nobody. He said violence. Go ahead. Which was prepared to Wait, fight. Read it again. The vi Come on, read that part. And the great what? And fell with violence upon the multitude, which was prepared to fight. Come on. And burned them up, every one. So that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived. But what? But only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. So when Ezra saw this in a vision, it says he was terrified. He was afraid. Jump down to verse 25. It's going to give you the breakdown in verse 25. Verse 25. <laughs> this is the meaning of the vision. Whereas thou sawest a man coming up from the midst of the sea. The same is he whom God the highest had kept a great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature, and he shall order them that are left behind. Uh, oh, oh, wait, 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 read that part again. The same is he whom God the highest hath kept a great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature. He's going to deliver us, his creature. Go ahead. And he shall order them. That are left behind. Oh, wait a minute. He shall order them that are left behind. That left behind is that one third that he's going to bring out. He said he's going to set them in order. So now brothers be arguing. Well, what if I'm of this tribe of that? Don't worry. Christ said he's going to set you in order. What verse was that, Nehemiah? Just read 26, sir. Verse 26. It says, and he shall order them that are left behind. Read. And whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth, there came a blast of wind and fire and storm, and that he held neither sword 
nor any instrument of war, but that the rushing in of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. Mm -hmm. This is the interpretation. Go ahead. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. Read. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. That's what we read in Thessalonians, too. And that's the same thing we read in Matthew 24. Go ahead. And one shall undertake. To but it's not supposed to take us off guard because we're supposed to be watching and reading, reading and watching, studying, praying, applying. So we should not hey, hey, go back to Thessalonians. Just dawned on me. In verse 1, 2 Thessalonians, we was at, what chapter was it? 5. I, it started 1. <coughs> verse Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 1. Read. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Why? Because he already had written it down, this time and season, Christ is going to come back. Meaning what? When you see wars amongst the nations, perplexity amongst the nations, when we go through tribulation, he says, look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. So read that again. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Go ahead. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so come as a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. So we're supposed to know that. We're supposed to know that and keep looking up saying, where's this is the time the Lord coming back. This That's is right. the time. Don't fear now. And no, don't be a scared. Okay? Because you've seen your aunt die, your brother die, your baby die. Don't worry about that. The Lord is coming. He's going to resurrect the dead. Everybody understand that? Go on back now. Second Ezra 13 again. And verse 30. Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 30. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. And one shall undertake to, fl to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. Spirit realm against the physical realm. Damn! Go ahead. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the sign shall happen which I showed thee before. And then shall my son. Then be shall my son, my son, my son. Go ahead. Be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascended. He's that man you saw. Go ahead. And when all the people hear his voice. When all the people hear his voice. Go ahead. Every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. When they fighting each other, they say, hey, "We got a bigger problem." Go ahead. And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them, willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. So imagine you got Russia, Ukraine, everybody coming against Israel. They're going to say, stop! Look! They're going to be the son of God is coming. He have a bigger problem. We got to fight him. One, two. That's like Independence Day, Bishop. Right, exactly. Same thing at Independence Day. All the <laughs> nation were doing whatever they were doing, fighting each other. They saw that they saw that 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 chariot, and then it was a problem. They all came against that chariot. Exactly. What verse you at? Thirty-five, sir. Go ahead. But he shall stand upon the top of the mountains, Mount Sion. Come on. And Sion shall come. That's us. Go ahead. And shall be showed to all men, mm -hmm. being prepared and builded, like as thou sawest the hill graven without hand. Read. And this, my son, shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations. Which for their wicked, so their wicked inventions are their missiles, their technology. Go ahead. Which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest. Now here's the part I wanted y'all to see. Go ahead. And shall lay before them their evil thoughts. Christ is going to lay before all of them their wicked thoughts, their evil thoughts. Go ahead. And the torment wherewith they shall begin to be tormented. Whatever your torment is, whatever your evil thought is, you're going to be tormented by that thought. Go ahead. Which are like unto a flame. Watch this. And he shall destroy them without labor. By the law, which is like unto fire. Thou shalt not commit adultery. When you hear that, boom, your black ass going to be burnt up. All you hoish women out there in the military, you're going to die too. Thou shalt not steal. All the Edomites that stole, they're going to be burnt to hell and back again. That's why he, he said, listen, my law is spiritual. We just can't see it. Give me, give me that in Jeremiah 5, 14. Jody going to be burnt up. Shukiana going to be burnt up. Sexy Red going to be burnt up. All you black holes going to be burnt up. 
Every last one of you. Booty hole gonna be black, b- black and bloody. Ash. You're gonna be ash. <laughs> ash. Read that, Jeremiah wow. 5, 14. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because you speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, mm-hmm. and this people would. See that? Go ahead. And it shall devour them. You see that? So we be teaching, the that's why I said, the word is where the power is. Not your regular voice. We telling the Muslims, we telling the Christians, you cannot stop this by using your words. Hey, brother. Hey, sister. Stop committing adultery. Stop killing each other. It ain't going to work that way. You must use the word of God. Why? Read it again, Nehemiah. Wherefore, thus saith the Come Lord. Come on, read with power, man. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, mm-hmm. and this people would, uh-huh. and it shall devour them. See, the power, the word of God is the power. This is the power source. We think because we can't see the fire, the Lord says, don't worry. The fire's there. They're getting cooked. That's why they're getting mad in their feelings. Ah! Ah! They're going home in their bed. They're upset because that fire is kindling in them. Revelation 19, 11. So they're either going to repent or die because if they're holding on to that adultery, that lying spirit they got, because in the end they're going to be burnt up literally. Revelation 19, 11. We're almost done. We're almost done. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, uh-huh. and behold, a white horse, and he that So sat- John is talking about the same thing Ezra saw, but John is just giving it more a metaphor. Go ahead. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Y'all see that? He doth judge and make war. Give me that in Exodus 15, 3, please. Let you know it's the same God. It's the same God. Go ahead. Exodus 15, verse 3. Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. He's a what? A man of war. He's a what? A man of war. He ain't no female. He's not no she. He ain't no woman. It says the Lord is a man, is a man of war. Was that it, Nehemiah? The Lord is his name. The Lord is the name. Back to Revelation 19, 11. That's right. So it's the same God, brothers and sisters. It's the same God. You play if you want. Maybe he's a sheep. Oh, stop it. Blasphemy. Come on. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. Come on. His eyes were as a flame of fire. So this is the same God in uh, Exodus. Go ahead. And on his head were many crowns. Come on. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. So what you arguing about is a name for? Maybe it's Yahweh Shai. Maybe it's Yehoshua. Maybe it's uh, Yuhe Wave. Stop! He got a name that no man knew but he himself. Come on. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. The vesture was dipped in blood because he did a whole, a whole lot of killing. Go ahead. And his name is called the Word of God. How about that? Call him that the Word of God. Nobody want to do it. No, no, no. They want an exclusive name. Go ahead. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. Go ahead. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Read. And out of the mouth goeth a sharp sword. That's the Word of God. He, hey, give me that Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4, verse 12. Watch this. I know everybody say they understand it, but watch. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, we also, we always bring this out, but watch this. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. <laughs> Piercing asunder soul and spirit. That's what you and I do when we teach the word. It pierces asunder soul and spirit. Read. And of the joints and marrow. Jo- wait, wait, wait. Joints and marrow, is that physical or spiritual? That's physical. That's, that's what the Lord going to do. Go ahead. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's what we're going to do with the word of God. Go ahead. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Was that the whole verse? Yes, sir. Let's go on back now. So when we teach the word, 
it's a spiritual battle. But when Christ come and teach and speak his words, speak the words of the Bible, it's going to be physical. Okay? The fire is going to burn people up. Finish Dividing you. asunder uh, joint and marrow, people are going to die. Hundreds and thousands and millions slaughtered. Back to Revelation 19. What verse you was at? Uh, 15, sir. Read. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That's the word of God. That with it he should smite the nation. Come on. And he should rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. You can read about that in Isaiah 63. Go ahead. And he hath on his vesture. He hath on his vesture. And on his thigh. And on his thigh. A name written. Uh -huh. King of kings and Lord of lords. So on his vesture that was written and on his thigh, on his pant that was written. Go ahead. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice. So who said Mary had sex with an angel? The angel stand in the sun. Ain't no woman. Yeah, she disintegrate. People be stupid. Read it again. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice. It's probably the same angel that had power over fire. Go ahead. Saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them. So it's going to be a huge sacrifice, like in Isaiah, what is it, 13, Isaiah 34, Revelation 19, that we're reading, talks about the sacrifice, and all the birds is going to come and eat. Go ahead. And the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Come up. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies. So this beast is talking about the beast with seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead. And their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse. Didn't we just read that in 2nd Ezra 13, 32 to 38? It's the same thing. Read verse 19 again so y'all can get in your Write down the precept. Go ahead. And I saw the beast. That's the beast with seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth uh -huh. and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Uh -huh. And the beast was taken and with him... The false prophet, uh -huh, the church that, system, that wrought miracles before him, with with which he deceived them. See, that, with which he what? Deceived them, that had received the mark of the beast. Their philosophies. Go ahead. And them that worshipped his image. White man, Jesus, and all the rest that goes with it. Go ahead. These both were cast alive into the lake. A fire. You're going to be cast alive into the lake of fire. Go ahead. Burning with brimstone. Because this whole country is going to be a lake of fire. Or a vast majority of it, I'll say it that way. Go ahead. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. So, brothers, 12 tribes. 12 tribes. Never give up. Never give up. Unity. Unity! 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 And with that, we say shalom. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord!